Fuck. I'm looking at you. Yay. Give me a burp or something to let me know when it's time for me to say, hey. It's All right. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Breaking the Fourth Wall. I am Chris Stolle, and of course, with me as always is my right hand when the left hand's catching the nuts, Brian Miller. <laughs> well, there you go. We are here. We are live. Make sure you're letting everybody know that we are live on Twitch TV. We're going to start episode three of season four here. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to start off right away. We're going to get the bad news out of the way first. Of course, you guys know in the past week, uh, we lost the queen of soul herself, uh, Aretha Franklin. I don't have the, the details pulled up right now, but by now, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows uh, what she passed away of. I just wanted to get your your thoughts on, on the passing of such a legend and what do you think it's going to do for the uh, music community? Little little Wayne. Uh, like Stan Lee, and uh, actually, I another one I forgot to pull up too is, uh, and we'll we'll discuss this really, really, really quick. Uh, apparently, Stan Lee has get, been uh, granted a three-year uh, uh, restraining order against his handler slash manager. Oh, really? Over that over that whole entire scenario of uh, reported uh, abuse. Oh, yeah. And neglect. Yeah. So he, I don't know more details than that. I just know that it's been reported that he has been granted a uh, restraining order of up to three years against uh, that person. So, right on. well, that's that's good. I mean, even though he was like coming out and saying that it wasn't happening, and then all of a sudden it magically was happening. Exactly. Uh, well, to to finish off the bad news, I mean that was kind of good news in between, but to finish off the bad news, this one hit me hard. And uh, actually, let me just let me just state real quick before I, I move on to this with with uh, Miss 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 Franklin, I disagree with you. I don't think people are going to forget in a week when it comes to somebody like Aretha because Aretha has really influenced a whole lot of people throughout the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, her music does stand the test of time. Ain't nobody in this world don't know like respect. You know, and stuff mm -hmm. of that nature, the song Respect and all. I don't care what care genre of music you listen to or anything else. You hear R-E-S-P-E-C-T. We all, like, finish the line. Find out what it means to me. You know, um, I don't think she'll be forgotten about. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't. Uh, it, 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 she's not a flash in a pan. She's not like Kanye West. If Kanye West were to drop dead tomorrow, nobody would give a shit by Thursday. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm being dead real, and I hope Kanye's watching this. Kim Kardashian, I hope you're watching this, and I hope I hurt your fucking feelings. Nobody gives a shit about you. Oh, my God. Aretha Franklin, on the other hand, though, goddess. Yeah. Huge loss to the music industry, and I think it will be felt for generations. Bring on the savage, bud. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm on it today. <laughs> no chill. I, I, uh, I am on it today. Fuck you, Kanye. Wow. So, uh, anyway, on to the other form of bad news this one hit me hard because i was a huge fan of these guys uh growing up I, anybody who knows me knows i'm not a basketball fan in any way shape or form like i'll i'll root on the 76ers because they're my hometown team when they're winning but i really don't care one way or another um but this one hit me hard even from as a kid and watching things like scooby-doo mm-hmm 
you know, and you remember when like Scooby Doo would uh, would meet up with uh, famous people, whether it was Batman and Robin or the Three Stooges, or Casper. every once in a while they did Casper or, at one point too. They did Casper. Well, every yeah. once in a while they would meet up with the original Harlem Globetrotters. Yep. And unfortunately, the Globetrotters have lost a legend in Metal Lark Lemon, who died today at 83 years old. Man. Do you have any memories of the Clown Prince of Basketball? Uh, personally, uh, no, because I've never been a basketball guy, uh, to be completely honest. It's, uh, I, honestly, to me, I really don't have, I don't have an opinion on it, really. It's just, it's not something that's always really mattered to me, if that makes any sense. Not to sound callous at all. Not to sound callous, but it's just that I've never been a basketball guy. Well, I, I mean, they they were pine. The the the, the Sixers were definitely uh, pioneers mm-hmm. in uh in the fact that they uh oh yeah, I said the Sixers, the Harlem Globetrotters, in the fact that they took a serious sport, which I'll call it what it is, it's a serious sport mm-hmm. of basketball, and were actually to able to make like a variety show out of it. Yeah. A comedy routine where you knew damn right well the Globetrotters were going to win the games they were playing, but it, because it, it was fixed, it wasn't about the sportsmanship; it was about the clownery, mm-hmm. and yet showing off like extreme skills, uh, basketball skills. You know what I mean? Because these guys were like best of the best in, in trick shots and and uh, trick dribbles, and mm-hmm. you know, of course, the clown stuff that they would do on top of it. Right. Um. Very, very interactive with the fan base, particularly kids. Uh, very, very, very interactive with communities and with charities and a lot of help. And I know that Meadowlark was like a driving force. He was kind of like the the front man of the team, of the original team that really sent the uh, the Globetrotters forward. Mm-hmm. I think it's a huge loss in the Globetrotter organization. I think it's a huge loss in sports. Uh you know, my heart goes out to its fans and and, and friends and family. Yeah. It, it it's a it's a huge loss. Yeah. But again, like you said, we're reaching that age where all our heroes are dying. Yeah. You know, all the people that were the people are getting older. Yeah. And and, and you know, and we don't realize it either, too. But we're getting older with them. And we're you know we you keep seeing these people, you know, go and and you're not realizing that you yourself. Are getting closer to it too. You know what I mean, like, right? It's just the way life goes. So uh, we have a couple more news. Uh, I'll do this one before we go into the, the uh, video game news. I'm okay. saving Star Wars for last because, as normal, because that'll be what we talk about the rest of the fucking night. No, 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 oh, no. no, no. I, when, I, when we put me and you on camera together, Star Wars <laughs> is where we always end up at. That's where we always go. Well, yes, I'll agree with that. But what I was going to say is that uh, I think most of it will be spent on the next uh, next uh, couple uh, uh, spots too. Oh yeah. But because I know you're going to go off on one of them, but I'm going to do oh, the quick Jesus. one first. <laughs> just shared with me 51 minutes ago from DeadlineTot.com. We were just talking about it. Mm-hmm. Brendan Fraser, famous for Encino Man, famous for Airheads, famous for The Mummy. Monkey uh, Bone. I forgot about Monkey Bone. Monkey Bone, and yeah. uh, wasn't he also in Looney Tunes back in action? Yeah. Yes, he yes, was. Yes, he was, yep. So, you know, uh, Brendan Fraser, is, and of course, George of the Jungle. We can't forget George of the Jungle. <laughs> Rubber oh, Tree, man. always good for oh, clothesline. Oh, my God. <laughs> is set to star as Robot Man in DC Universe TV series Doom Patrol. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about Doom Patrol. Neither do I. I know yeah. zero of I don't know what property this is. I've never heard of Robot Man before in my life. Mm-hmm. However, you have my complete and total attention by casting Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Plain and simple. You take my money. I love Brendan Fraser. I love his especially his comedic timing. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and all uh, I, I've watched the majority of the films he's been in throughout the years. And I'm I'm actually excited for a property I know nothing about. Brian, what how did you feel when I told you about this? Brendan <laughs> Fraser for me and I'm probably going to get lynched for this. Um you know, <laughs> I, I like I like Brendan Fraser just fine. I do. It's um but he's one of those actors that every single movie he's I remember this is just my opinion. This isn't I mean you might disagree with me and that, that's great. Neither of us are right, neither of us are wrong. 
but he's always been one of those people to me that seems like every single movie he's in, he plays the exact same character in all of them. Like he's, he's like this journey to the center of the earth. Like he just, it, it seems to me like he's not playing a character. He's playing himself in every single movie. Like I just, I don't know. It, it doesn't, it, it doesn't get me any extra hype for the, for the show or not. You know, I mean, I, I, I can I I can kind of agree with you on that, but like unlike that, the, the argument I was going to make is like Nicolas Cage and 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 John Travolta and such have made careers off of playing the exact same character over and over again. But the difference it's, the difference it's funny is you said those two because in Face Off they were playing each other. <laughs> exactly, it's funny you said that, and they played the exact same characters. Yeah. Um, but the, the fact of the matter the fact of the matter is is like the only difference is we don't see Brendan Fraser as much. In fact, I'm struggling right now to think of the most recent movie Brendan Fraser has done that wasn't a cameo in, like, G.I. Joe. Uh, the Rise of Cobra. It, was it Journey to the Center of the Earth? It might have been, but again, that got foreshadowed by the Journey to the Center of the Earth with The Rock, wasn't it? That was the sequel. I think, Whatever. I think, wasn't it? I don't know if it was a sequel or a reboot. I didn't care enough to <laughs> yeah, watch I, it I to know. know. Yeah. No offense to The Rock. I mean, you know, he he is modern day. Uh, oh, don't worry. If you don't like one of his movies this week, next week he'll have a new movie out. So don't even worry about it. He, he's, you got plenty of them to pick from. <laughs> hey, look, I, I, I'm not a big fan of Vin Diesel. I am a fan of The Rock, but I got to respect anybody who's willing to, like, you know, go on camera wearing a tutu. <laughs> uh, Larry the Cable Guy? Hulk Hogan. Hulk. <laughs> True story. True story. So yeah, I, it, to me, to me, like the, it's sold because I do like Brendan Fraser. I like the look of Brendan Fraser. You know, uh, I do like his like th- his facial features when he's when he's doing his comedy. He is a very physical, especially in in his facial actions, mm-hmm. a very physical actor. Yeah, I yeah, think he has a rubber he has a rubber face. He has a rubber face. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. And uh, he definitely has comedic timing and chops to it, the way he delivers things. Mm-hmm. Whatever role he's going to play in this, whatever robot man is, he sh- I think he's going to nail it. I think he's going to do an awesome job of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I, I don't have high expectations because I know nothing about this property. Right. You know, I'm going to have to research more about this. Pro- this dropped in my lap 10 minutes before we went on air. So... Mm-hmm. I have no idea what the hell Doom Patrol is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm gonna have to learn about it and maybe you know discuss it in next week's episode more in detail. But based off of the fact that I know Brendan Fraser is gonna be in it, mm-hmm. I'm excited to at least see a trailer for it. Yeah, we'll see. It's, a lot it's, more excited than Teen Titans. It's oh, hmm. <laughs> uh, let's not go there. Um, oh, I went there. No, it, it I, seems like. Doom Patrol is is kind of like what Guardians of the Galaxy was for Marvel when when that was coming out. Nobody knew a damn thing about Guardians of the Galaxy, except for like some really really serious sweaties. Like they were like, "Oh, you don't know who Guardians of the Galaxy are?" And then now that the movie's out, everybody knows who the fucking Guardians of the Galaxy are. You know, like so I, it might be one of those same things. I don't know, but well, see, I, that that's how I'm feeling right now. Exactly how I'm feeling right now is I'm feeling like a lot of the uh, people watching or listening in, whether it's here on Twitch TV or later on on uh, Patreon and YouTube or or RadioCastFM.com, are going to be like, "Ah, Chris, you got to turn in your sweaty card because you don't know shit." Yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't. You know, at least where this is concerned, I don't know about it. I want to learn more about it, and honestly, what's piquing my interest about it is the fact that it is Brendan Fraser. Mm. Other than that, I would have gone the rest of my life not knowing what the fuck Doom Patrol is. Oh, you and me both. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Never would have. Uh, I don't know. Shall we Shall we get into some video game news? Yeah, bring it on. All right. Well, we'll start off with the easy one, although it's the one I'm a little bit more excited for. Uh, you know this. I'm obviously, for Press A Gaming, I'm going to be day one doing a, uh, a let's play, a blind let's play of this game. Fallout 76 released a new trailer at Gamescon 2018 uh, about eight hours ago, actually, for a trailer they called a New American Dream trailer, which was set in the in the typical vault tech, like, you know, uh, 1950s style, like, so you're curing cancer type video. And uh, it's it's really giving you more of an idea of how, how like, the... Uh, 
settlement building system is going to play out in 76. Have you seen this trailer? I haven't seen it yet. No. Um, you're bigger into the fallout stuff than I am. Although when 76 comes out, I am going to be picking that up because I've been watching, so, you know, your, your let's plays of, of fallout four and you've, you've pretty much got my interest peaked of where I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> and you're going to join me in it because yeah, we I'm can co-op. Yep. Yes. I, in fact, I hope I, I, if I know, if I understand fallout 76 correctly, you're allowed up to four people in your party. Nice. At a time. I'm hoping to be able to put together a four man team permanently for the let's play mm -hmm. where we schedule up a, a day out of the week or something like that, where we all sit around and work together. Right. Is that it seems to me that that's what they're building most for Fallout 76 is that they want the com uh, the uh, uh, camaraderie mm -hmm. and, and the team dynamic built into this game. As opposed to the previous fallouts where it's always been like you yourself and maybe a NPC companion. Right. You know what I mean? So I think I think uh, I would uh, me and you running. That's great. We could set up a day, record it, you know, every uh, every time that week or whatever. And people mm -hmm. can watch it on here on Twitch TV uh, or. But I'd like to get at least two more people that we know for a fact and we'll, we'll free up the time to do it, mm -hmm. have it for the system. You know, and uh, we rock that out. Yeah. So if you're watching and you're planning to pick up Fallout 76 for the PS4, let us know. Yeah. You you may be a new member of Realm of the Mist Entertainment through <laughs> Fallout 76. <laughs> We've tried that with Battlefront, bud. Yes, we have tried that. With, and it's, it's been slightly successful. It has. Yes, it has. It, it has, has yes. Not for us, though, for the cocky cockpit. That's true. <laughs> That's true. This is us putting the call out. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of Bethesda and Fallout, we go on to the other news that I know is going to set you off. First and foremost, <sighs> have, have you taken the opportunity yet to watch the Doom Eternal trailer? No. Do yourself a favor right now. Right now. Right now. Okay. Take a quick look at Doom, at Doom Eternal. Eternal. Okay. At Doom Eternal. Now, I know there's a gameplay trailer, which is like eight minutes long. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you'll want to sit through all of that. That's the one you're talking about? It might be. Ooh. But to at least give you some taste so that way you get some uh, inflection of what I'm going to be talking about here. Okay, hang on. Let me look it up. All right. Now, while he's doing that, I will continue to discuss with you guys here because I know we have three viewers up right now. Uh, I will continue to discuss with you guys right now what the uh, premise of this is. Uh, the trailer for Doom Eternal, especially the gameplay, has been gathering a lot of uh, criticism and a lot of boycott talk because of the fact that uh, they're talking about a lot of anti-immigration uh, propaganda within the Doom Eternal videos. And... I want to get everybody's opinion on that, whether they think it's justified or unjustified. It, it is. It's absolutely blatant. I'm not going to lie. And, and I'm sure he's going to, you know, he's going to find this out very soon. As he's watching this. Yeah, I'm watching it right now. By the way, tell me this game does not look sick. No, it, it looks absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> it's beautiful. But I am going to mute my mic. That way, we don't get hit with a copyright, or if we if we do for the for the game play, don't mute it. Just try to turn it down a little bit, so okay. that way, because I I kind of want to hear when you get to the part. What the hell is he? What the hell's who? Your character, demon. Your character is a demon slayer. Okay. He's he's called the Doom Slayer. I knew that. So. What the hell? This doesn't look like any Doom I've ever played. It's literally... You remember my gameplay of Doom 2016? Yeah. It's, 20, it's 2016 on speed. This game looks insane. I, I am so looking forward to this game. Holy shit. <laughs> the glory kills and... Like that that hook shot that you that oh you connect to your weapon. Oh my god! Cherry cobbler everywhere. 
<laughs> oh, well, fuck that vent. Yeah, this will definitely be another one I need to pick up. Holy shit. Why do I get the feeling this guy, like, get done with this fight and went and laid down in his bunk? He's like, well, just another day. Pretty much. I mean, if you, if you watch if you watch the full Let's Play that I did of Doom, uh, Doom 2016, it gives you the story of Doom, uh, the Doom guy. And uh, oh, I didn't want that vent cover there anyway. <laughs> and I'll go into detail about that if you want the information later. Literally, I'm just waiting for the part where you start hearing in the background uh, the the SJW stuff about like uh, don't call them demons because it's offensive and learn to share the world. <laughs> Learn to share the world. Shut the fuck up. This guy is on fire. Well, just think about it. This is gameplay footage, right? This is some developer showing off his skills. Then you watch my Let's Plays and how terrible Holy I am. Holy crap. Yeah, Chris, what's your excuse, bud? I'm not a game developer. <laughs> I'm 41 years old, and my hands are 41-year-old hands. I don't have the dexterity anymore. Well, that explains why you can't hit anything on Battlefront. No, that's according to... Uh, to uh... <laughs> Jay? According to, according to the guy who uh, was not allowed to do any disintegrations, I need to aim better. Of course, I'm not going to... What up, losers? Hey, we got Jay Tolly seventy seven. What is up, John Mark hey, Tolly? So wait, you got an autograph from Jeremy Bullock. I did saying you need you, don't forget to aim. Uh huh. This is coming from the one Star Wars character that is so badass he never killed a single person. That's it. That's the guy who got defeated by a blind guy with a you know stick. What's funny? And shoved, shoved down a toothy butthole. Mine's right there. I got my Jeremy okay. Bullock autograph right there. Yep. Oh, you got one? Yeah, it's right here, right above my shoulder. Nice. Mine's right above my head. Yeah, I see it. That's both courtesy <laughs> of Richard J. Ah, I was wondering if he was going to send one to you. Yeah. I knew you were upset when, uh, I, I when got I got mine like a year ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, because he got me that. He got me uh, a David Prowse, which is on the wall over there. And uh, or he, he was the one that got you to David Prowse. Jay was. Oh, you you little you little uh, <laughs> you little Welsh twat! He, you need to get me one. He got and he got me my Mike Quinn autograph. Nah, no, I'm, I'm kidding, man. It, it was it was a huge shot. Actually, it was kind of a funny story. I'll share it with you while I'm waiting for you to do this uh, this trailer. Yeah, this when when it over. showed up in my in my mailbox, it was all bent into the mailbox because I got that a typical apartment like you know very oh, tiny mailbox. Oh my god! It wasn't folded. It was just you know folded over like creased though not creased but you know folded and uh i pull it out and i had no idea what the hell it was it was just a plain brown uh uh envelope right mm -hmm. i thought it was just junk mail i was gonna rip it up and throw it away <laughs> luckily he told jen that this shit was on its way don't tell me she was the one to stop me from just going ahead and going <laughs> you know thinking it was like comcast business what do you do with me and kirsty too yeah you know, thinking it was Comcast business trying to sell uh, internet to the to realm of the mist. <laughs> In yep. which case, I would have been cursing hard <laughs> yep. after I opened it up. Oh my god, I just ripped up Boba Fett's autograph. You know what I mean? So it was, it was kind of a funny thing. Oh my that god, I would have never let you live that down. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, Han, that's how you handle Boba. But yes, I'm I'm getting told to aim. From the guy who got defeated Doomsday? in his first in his first real battle against a blind guy with a stick that shoved him down a toothy butthole. Just remember that. But still a very badass character. Yeah, he was cool looking. <laughs> what in the hell? So you're still on that you're still on that, huh? Well I just I just finished it. Okay. Uh, John John Tolley says all he gave me was fucking tea. <laughs> <laughs> I put we got we got job of the gut right here. Job of the gut. Job of that, the gut. That's not a nice thing to say about Jen. 
I was talking about the cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. She, she might... She my old pussy. All right, so you got a chance to take a look at the trailer. First off, how sick is that trailer? That looks sicker than shit. <laughs> Speaking no of. <laughs> yeah. So that looks absolutely sick, dude. All right, so did, did you catch any of the background? Yes. Uh, what do you think? For the love of it, God, just. Is it is it blatant slapping your face? I just. Do the SJWs have a right to bitch about this, or is it just... No, they don't have a right simple? to bitch about anything. I mean, they, have, a, they it... have every right to bitch about stuff, but there's no point to it. Who gives a shit? Somebody has a different opinion than you, and they're making fun of you. You are literally giving us material to make fun of you with. I, and you can't expect us not to fucking do anything with it. Are you fucking <laughs> serious? Like, no, that... Don't get fucking pissed off. And you know, if they were, if it was the other way around and they were making fun of like where we stand on on the issue, they wouldn't have a single fucking problem with it. Oh yeah, bash the fuck out of them. No, it's but because they're the target, it's not okay because their feelings are getting hurt. Well, that 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 was going to be my question. Do they is this a legitimate attack on SJW culture and immigration, or is it simply satire? I think it's just satire. I think I think that, everybody's taking it too goddamn personally. You see, I I think it's funny as shit, but then again, I, I think we should I think we should build a wall and all illegal immigrants should be deported. Yeah. You don't like what I have to say? Don't watch my streams, don't watch my videos. Don't be my friend on Facebook. Yep. I don't give a shit. Well, it's not just if you don't like what we're saying. If if cuz there's a difference between not agreeing with somebody and just blatantly attacking somebody because of their opinion. You can respectfully disagree. You know what I mean? Like, because we talk about this all the time, you know, because mm -hmm. we, we, you and I stand, uh, we're, we're pretty uh, solidified in where we stand politically, right? You and I talk a lot about this, especially with our mm -hmm. Facebook and stuff. Uh, so we, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of what we try oh to my God. the air. Yeah. So uh, we, we stand pretty much at the same spot. And it's, it's <sighs> never once have I ever, deleted anybody on Facebook because of a difference of opinion. I'm always the one getting deleted. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, I, I don't care if you have a different opinion than me. I, I welcome you putting your opinion out there. I will debate you all fucking day on it, you know, <laughs> but you can't you get you pissed throw. off. You can't get pissed off when somebody doesn't agree with you and they have a voice and puts it in a video game. You know what I mean? Like who gives a shit? Well, you got to remember, Bethesda, especially since, like you said, you've been paying attention to my uh, streams of Fallout. If you haven't noticed, Bethesda spends a lot of time in the uh, in the heyday of, I guess, uh, uh, conservative culture. Mm -hmm. Like even even as crazy as Fallout Four is, you know that you remember that the Fallout timeline split in the 1950s during the the and and the culture never got out of the 1950s norms mm -hmm. which means it never got out of that true american right. belief system of the 1950s right you know even though you put it in a mad max world it's still you know ozzy and harriet uh donna reed you know type type culture you still got this slim line machines like the that's like the pastel sky blue color with the chrome you know like you still have right. all that stuff you know that it's just that that kind of retro astro looking stuff. Where the the time period where everything had the word astro at the beginning of it, right? You know, but the, the the fact of the matter is, is, and I know a lot of people are talking about like you know the world uh, the, the world in the nineteen fifties was very patriarchal. It was because you know there wasn't a whole lot of uh, rights to to minorities, wasn't a whole lot of rights to women yet. Yeah. However, th thank you. The booming economy and uh, 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 American pride in, in craftsmanship was at an all-time high in the 1950s and when conservatives talk about things like uh you know trump's catchphrase of making america great again mm -hmm. that's what they're talking about the, in, the the pride of being an american of things being made in america these are things that of, you know, conservatives are striving towards not necessarily uh, women are barefoot and pregnant in the home and and men are out in the workforce, mm -hmm. not repressing minorities or anything of that nature, no matter what anybody wants to believe. It's the the family unit 
returned. Mm-hmm. The pride and craftsmanship returned. Yeah. And being proud of being an American citizen, a legal American citizen. Yep. You know, and I think that's very much reflected on a lot of Bethesda games. I think I think the creators of a lot of Bethesda games, I think, do lean uh, at least right of center. Yeah. Okay, and I think I think uh, unfortunately that rubs the uh, the the homeless or 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 jobless uh, SJWs and and college students taking gender studies the wrong way because. Oh my God! They're they're preaching to me about what's right in the world and uh, and something that I'm supposed to be able to do to get you know my credits to to be allowed to go. Uh, I'm not even going to finish that because I <laughs> I don't understand your fucking culture. You're idiots. Yeah, I don't. No, it's uh, like like you were talking about. I I don't think you know. It's I think it's a blatant jab at an issue we have going on today. And like you said, they kind of have that that leaning right mentality. I don't think it's meant to be an actual jab, but I do think it was meant to be a, uh, hey, we're not going to piss everybody off. We're just going to piss off the people that don't matter. <laughs> that's really, I feel like that's what they're saying, you know, and I'm not saying that's where I stand on it. Everybody's opinion matters. And at the same time, nobody's opinion matters, you know, it's, but it's, it's just, I don't know. I just, I don't feel like it's one of those things that everybody needs to read so, so goddamn far into, you know? No, you're absolutely right, but I, I will say this much, and and it, it will, will kind of lean into uh, to where we're going to go with a lot of our conversations here in the future. Uh, <laughs> as I'm getting attacked by a cat, um, <laughs> pussy magnet. The same the same people that are bitching about, oh my god, this is so anti SJW, whatever, in a video game, are the same ones that were telling us to suck it up, Buttercup, when we had issues with with Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Yeah. You know, um. Which again exposes the hypocrisy. Yeah, it's okay when it promotes and fits your political agenda or your political point of view, but when it doesn't, when it go, when it exposes somebody else's point of view, yeah, then it should be censored or banned or boycott. See, that's the problem I have with it. I don't care that people are don't like it. You know what? There's plenty of things in this world I don't like, and you know what I simply do when I don't like it? I don't watch it. Yeah, or I don't play it, or I don't listen to it. Mm-hmm. I don't spend my life trying to get rid of it from the world. These people want to boycott Doom Eternal. Let them. Because of the fact that one trailer made a satire joke about illegal demon invasion in America. I let them. I don't. I mean, they have every right to do that. I don't. It's not going to affect me at all. I don't care. I'm still going to play it. It does not affect my life one bit. They're the only ones missing out on what looks like a sick, sick game. Oh yeah, this, this game, this game, you know, fuck your Call of Duty, <laughs> <laughs> fuck your Call of Duty, fuck Halo. Yeah, I know Halo Six is coming and all that. Fuck, fuck all of them. Doom Eternal looks like it's going to blow all of them out of the water with a glorious splash of fucking cherry cobbler. <laughs> God damn, dude. Ah. Uh. And huh? you know what? And how much you want to bet? How much you want oh, to bet this on. game is going to have a uh, a graphics uh, decision on like gore, like graphic death go- uh, decision? What game was it? Oh crap! Boy, there was a game. I don't remember what it was. There was one that uh, recently. I don't remember. You could turn off the blood. Most game, most of the violent games, you can do that. Like I, I, yeah, I know no, a couple I, of the Call of Duty had hope it. This uh, one doesn't have it. Uh, what was it? It was Call of Duty uh, Advanced Warfare, wasn't it? That you could turn the blood uh, into paintball? Yep. The oh, blood effects and the paintball effects? Oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, can we put up a picture of Richard J. real quick? I don't have one. Damn. Well, Richard J., I just got to say, man, thank you very much for getting that uh, that picture, autograph picture of Boba Fett for me. Mm-hmm. But I gotta say, man, fuck you, because now Jen's over here making jokes about maybe I'll learn to aim when I play Doom Eternal. <laughs> hey, if anybody needs to learn how to aim around here, it's me. I'm the only one that's not a father yet after six years. I was about to say, I, I've hit the target at least three times. <laughs> you hit that thermal exhaust port. <laughs> did, did I ever tell you the story of a friend of mine years ago when I was in a band called uh, uh, Defenestrate? 
I had a rhythm guitarist named Chris, Chris Mayer, and Christina will ba- uh, vouch for this. Um, he one time, me, Christina, and and Chris Mayer were all hanging out, and he, he Mayer was quieter than he normally was, and uh, he finally turned around to us. He's like, he, he was a guy who was a virgin at the time. And he, he turned around to us. He's like, look, guys, I, I got to ask you something. I'm kind of embarrassed about it, but I, I don't understand. You know, I, I'm worried that I may have done something wrong. And we're like, OK, what's up? And, you know, he was kind of embarrassed about it. And he said, well, let me put it <laughs> let me let me put it in a Star Wars uh, frame of reference. And we're like, OK, he says, is loss of virginity when you fly your X-wing down the Death Star Trench or when you shoot your photon torpedoes into the exhaust port? <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. He was dead serious too. <laughs> so that tells me one of two things happen. Either he shot before he even got into the trench. <laughs> or he or... flew so far into the trench he couldn't hit the thermal exhaust port and like his torpedoes just wouldn't fire. One of two things happen. <laughs> Greatest night ever. I don't think we ever answered him, to be honest with you. I think we were rolling on the floor laughing too hard. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, he's probably like, them fucking bastards. <laughs> you should have looked, right. looked at him and just went, just a pecking on the surface. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Get out of the you way. Make- you can't do any more good back there. Sorry. <laughs> You may fire when ready, single reaction only. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I am the Grand Moff of jerking hey, off. Mark, Mark in the chat said, I'm shooting blanks over here. Yeah, uh, we know. <laughs> if anybody's uh, shooting blanks. Hmm. Yeah, but there's a difference between being born blank, blanked out and uh, taking the bullets out of the gun. All right, let's move on here. Oh, let's, my let's get God. Some, yeah, let's, let's get stop some... talking about my sex life. What the fuck? <laughs> yep, this, one, this one's going off the rails like they all do. As they always do. Let, let's, let's spend a little more time in the comic book world with the upcoming Deadpool 2 coming out on Blu-ray and DVD this Wednesday night. <laughs> Yay! Tim Miller it has been seen, uh, who was originally slated to be the director of Deadpool 2, who was director of Tim, uh, Deadpool 1. Uh, the extremely successful Deadpool one uh, would have featured in his script cameos of the Fantastic Four. It has been seen that Tim Miller had originally had plans in his script to have the Fan Four stick Fantastic Four oh, make God that make one? an appearance. Yes, we uh, played by Mr. Fantastic Miles Teller. Kate Mara, the Invisible Warden uh, Woman, oh, Michael my. B. Jordan as a Human Torch, and Jamie Bell as a Thing. He wanted to have Fan Four stick Fantastic Four in Deadpool too. The only reason I'm not screaming at that, well, two reasons. First, it didn't happen, <laughs> and sec, I would have loved to have heard Deadpool's jokes about Fan Four stick. I just, I, I just, oh my God. Look, okay, you want to talk about derailing. You think our podcast derails? You don't know a goddamn thing because Fan Four Stick, like everybody was talking about how bad that movie was when it first came out. And I was like, okay, I got to watch this tra- this train wreck and just see how bad it is. <laughs> so we start the movie, right? Like we were at Kirstie's mom and dad's and we started the movie. And, uh, oh, hey, Mark uh, said later, guys. Take it easy, brother. Um, Take it easy, man. Have a good day at work. Oh, and yeah. don't forget, tomorrow, guys, tomorrow here live will be John Mark Tully, myself, and hopefully Brian Miller. Maybe. Uh, uh, doing War of the Stars, a Star Wars uh, podcast. And we will have a special guest. John, if you are still there, why don't you uh, let everybody know who that guest is because the name's escaping me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm actually trying to look it up right now. <laughs> Uh oh, we have a media source co- decoding error. Uh oh. You might want to check the stream. Let me look here. Let me look. But anyway, uh, no, uh, with uh, 
Van Forstick had that literal pivotal derail moment where the first hour of the movie was actually really good, and I was trying to figure out why nobody really cared for it, and then it happened. And every, and, and I told everybody, when you watch this movie, you're going to see right off the bat exactly what I'm talking about. And nobody seemed to really understand uh, what I was getting at until that moment happened. And it's one of those moments where when it happens, you fucking know it just happened. There's no questioning. Is this it? No, that's it. Yeah, he ain't lying either, you know. But uh, no, what, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, would it would it even have been cool? I mean, technically, Deadpool and and all that aren't really, I guess, canon. Mm-hmm. You know, the Fox the Fox made uh, 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 superheroes aren't really canon anyway. No. You know what I mean? At least not within the MCU. Yeah. Not yet. Hmm. It's so I mean, what would it have been a bad thing? And then, more than like, I mean, we're talking about Deadpool, and There's... it was, and it was blatantly known as one of the worst comic book adaptation movies of all time. I can't imagine that uh, the Fantastic Four, Four Four Stick Group wouldn't have cameoed in Deadpool for anything more than to make fun of the Fantastic Four movie. Here, here's why I think it didn't happen. All right, and and, and this is just my theory. I don't have anything to back this up. This is just where I think it was going to go. Right. I think I think this deal with Fox and Disney has been in the works for a lot longer than we think it has. And I think Disney knew from the get-go that they're going to end up rebooting the X-Men, Fantastic Four, you know, these they hell they helped uh, Sony reboot Spider-Man, right? Right. So, so where I see them going with this is the reason I think they the reason I think they didn't do it. Marvel's got plans later on down the road to reboot Fantastic Four. X-Men, bring them into the MCU, right? Deadpool is one of those characters. Like, you could reboot X-Men, right? Completely and totally reboot it. New actors for all of it. Deadpool, because of the character he is and what he is and who he is, he's the one character that you could get away with not rebooting. And still keep him. You know what I mean? Still reboot him, but use the same actor. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the one character because of the break in the fourth wall thing. You could get away with it. You know, so he could say, you know, somewhere, oh, so we're just going to pretend those other movies didn't happen. Okay, that's cool. Let's just, that never happened, you know, or you know, something along those lines. Or he could even make jokes, you know, whenever, whoever is cast as the new Wolverine, whenever he's looking at him for the first time, he could be like, well, he's no Hugh Jackman, you know, or he could just do some, some shit like that. The, I think they didn't put that Fantastic Four in there <coughs> because they're going to have the new Fantastic Four later on with this iteration of Deadpool. I just, I, think, we, I think that's the way we, they're going with it. Do we even need another Fantastic Four? Like, okay, even with the, yeah, okay, we, we, we rebooted, Four. we rebooted Spider Man and it was successful. Of course, it was connected to the MCU. Mm-hmm. Um, but do we really need a reboot of Fantastic Four? I, I personally, I preferred the original Fantastic Four. I thought, I thought Chris Evans as the Human Torch and and uh, the but we can't do that now. Thing. Yeah, of course we can't do that now. But I. <laughs> People bitch so much about the Rise of Silver Surfer. I don't think that was a bad movie. Well, look, I, was I, it the best uh, comic book movie I ever saw? No, but I mean, up until that point, the worst comic book movie I ever saw was a toss-up between Electra and Catwoman, mm-hmm. and then Which Fat Force walked away with that then, one. Then Fan Stick came out and said, "Hold my beer." <laughs> You're not wrong. Look, I, I would almost if I if I was Kevin Feige right now, or if I was Marvel Studios, I would be looking at the X Men and Fantastic Four as let's just start them out as supporting characters, kind of like what we've done with Black Widow, Hawkeye, uh, Scarlet Witch, you know, War Machine. None of these guys have had their own films, you know. Um, and, you really, and, honestly, think we ever and, will? Well, I, no, we won't. But I'm just saying they they. The Fantastic Four, obviously, for uh, y- y- obviously you like the first two Fantastic Four movies, right? So I didn't think they were bad, right? But but most the the most majority of the people were not fans of them, you know. Um, the vast majority of people didn't care for them. So I'm almost sitting here wondering if it's even possible to make a decent Fantastic Four movie. Obviously, we can make good X Men movies because we've got X Men two or X Men one and two, right? And then a couple of mediocre mediocre ones that came later on. But then you got first class then, and uh, Days of Future Past, which were were pretty good in my opinion. I thought Days oh of they Future were Past. they were phenomenal, yeah. and then of course it derailed again with, with Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Yeah, um, but they, but you've also got stinkers in there like X Men Three, Wolverine Origins. You know, like it's just there's some in there that is just I mean the Wolverine wasn't 
bad. Logan was great. Look, outside of the bullshit, but, de- uh, outside of the dead uh, bullshit Deadpool, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine wasn't terrible. That was actually a really good movie. They just fucked up with uh, with Deadpool. That was the movie though that they started introducing a lot of continuity errors into the universe. Like everything True. made sense up to that point, and then. Everything that happened to Wolverine in that movie didn't match up with his nightmares and his visions of what had happened to him in X-Men 2. There was no blood, you know? When Wolverine runs out of Alkali Lake, he's perfectly clean. He just slaughtered, like, four dozen people, and there's not a drop of blood anywhere on him. (laughs) Like, fucking really? You know, but it's just... But in his flashbacks, he's covered in blood, right? So it's... Right. And then you've got, you know... I I don't know. Like, I just... I didn't care for Origins that much. Now, with Deadpool... In Origins, whenever it was just Deadpool at the beginning of the movie, when it was Wade, was that was dead that on. Was perfect. That was dead on minus the mask. Like, that was literally mm-hmm. dead on Deadpool, right? Mm-hmm. But it's just... And I feel like they were trying to set Deadpool up at the end of that movie to appear later on, and it just never happened. But that movie just put so many continuity errors into the universe. That was the start of the continuity problem. You know, it's kind of funny Especially when we speak about time. it. It's funny how we how when we think about it, how many different times has Ryan Reynolds appeared in a comic book movie before finally becoming Deadpool? Oh my God! I mean, he was in uh, he was in Blade. It was Blade Trinity, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, he was uh, he he uh, obviously did the fake Deadpool and Ed- X Men Origins, and of course, the most infamous is the uh, Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, how many times has this guy had chances at comic book film stardom? But again, it kind of goes back to all the way back to the Brendan Fraser thing you were talking about, how, like, Brendan Fraser, let's be real. I love Deadpool. I love Ryan Reynolds. But his roles are almost the same. I think the only. Always the same. I think the only role I ever saw Ryan Reynolds in where he wasn't the same was in the uh, uh, reimagining of the Amityville horror. Oh, yeah. He did a dramatic role in that. Um, and he was good in it. He was really hell, good. Hell, even for a chick flick, uh, The Proposal. Like, I don't like chick flicks, but I really did like The Proposal. He was good in that, you know? He wasn't just straight, raunchy, balls-to-the-wall comedy in that, you know? That's exactly where I was going, Agro Dad. Is I was going to say, literally, Deadpool without the mask is Van Wilder. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know let, let's call a spade a spade giving giving ryan reynolds the forefront in, in x-men uh wolverine uh to be deadpool without without uh without the mask on of course ryan reynolds is going to excel at the role mm-hmm. the biggest fuck up is you took ryan reynolds and you covered his mouth <laughs> so did you didn't you let him you didn't let him speak yeah <laughs> Whether it's Deadpool or anything, that's a, that's an injustice to Ryan Reynolds because mm-hmm. his 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 money maker is his mouth and the sarcasm that comes out of it. Well, look, you you haven't seen. We talked about this last week. You have not seen the end credit scene to Deadpool two yet. Nope. That scene alone, and Agrodad, I, I think, is the one that I was talking to us about uh, last week. Absolute pure joy in that scene. When you see that scene, you are going to completely forgive Ryan Reynolds for everything he's ever fucking done. I've never had a problem with Ryan Reynolds and what he's done. But you are not going to have a problem with anything. You're not going to have a problem with with the Deadpool from Origins anymore. You're not going to have a problem with uh, Green Lantern. You're you're just not going to have a problem with him anymore. Like, ever again. (laughs) Because... When you I've see never had this... a problem with Ryan Reynolds, though. Oh it's God. never his fault. It's the look, people who wrote it. Look. The uh, guy went to get a paycheck. I can't blame him for taking a paycheck. When you – and okay, keep in mind, the, the directors – yeah, look, Agrodad is saying, oh, my God, epic, fucking epic. He's not wrong. Like, this is by far the – capital T, capital H, capital E – the <laughs> best end credit scene in any movie ever. Bar none. That, Until I'm taking, Star Wars Episode Nine it the, no, announces it'll Episode beat Ten. That. It'll beat that. Because when I was watching, uh, yeah, he just said the people who wrote it made it wrong. He made it right. He's mm-hmm. not wrong. He, Ryan Reynolds went back and fixed everything. Okay, and the, and the writers even came out and said the director came out. Uh, he even said, uh, "Yeah, that's canon. 
Yeah, those scenes are canon. Those actually happen in the X Men universe. So when you go back and watch this, you are going to it's you were I swear to God, when you watch it for the first time, please don't watch it without me being on Skype with you because I want to see the look on your face while you're watching these scenes. It's I was just, just about to ask when it, when it comes out. Oh obviously, I'm probably going to be pick, probably probably going to be picking it up this weekend. Should I be doing a reaction video yes. and just go right to the end credit scenes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You've okay. seen the movie, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you've seen the movie, absolutely, absolutely, you have to do a reaction to this. <laughs> you have to. It is. Oh my god, I cannot say it enough. Absolute best fucking end credit scene ever. All right, guys, you heard it here first. So it looks like I'm going to be doing a uh, reaction to the Deadpool 2 ed- end credit scene as soon as I have it on Blu-ray, uh, right here on Twitch. Yeah. So. Oh my god, I can't wait. Keep keep an eye out for that. So, all right. Uh, one other thing I want to discuss. I don't have it up yet. Uh, have you had a chance to look at this? I know I talked to you personally about this. The uh, next Terminator movie. We uh, we kind of touched on it last night. When we were playing Battlefront, or when right when I was playing Battlefront, you were playing No Man's Sky. That was night before last, wasn't it? Right. Um. Yeah. We we briefly touched on it a little bit. Well, go. You can go ahead and and uh, drop the uh, drop the news. They are releasing or making another uh, Terminator movie. Yes, it's going to have Linda Hamilton back in the role hey, as Sarah hey, real Connor. Quick, real quick, not to cut you off, but Agard yeah. said, I will be tuning in for you to tell us how right we are. Okay. About well, the reaction I'll, scene, yeah. I will make sure that happens. Probably, I, I mean, the, tentatively, I'll schedule it for Saturday night. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, uh, but I but I say tentatively because I'll have my kids, and of course I get Saturday's the day I get shit done for my family. Mm-hmm. So I'll say tentatively Saturday, maybe Sunday, mm-hmm. if I'm even able to pick up the Blu-ray. I mean, you know, something right. might happen where I can't find a copy for whatever reason. I mean, it is Deadpool too, mm-hmm. um, but more than likely it should be all right. But uh, anyway, back to Terminator. Yeah, back to what I was saying about Terminator. They are planning on the next Terminator movie, and uh, uh, of course, Linda Hamilton will be reprising her role as Sarah Connor, an older Sarah Connor. But Hollywood not learning from the mistakes of Ocean's 8 and Ghostbusters Answer the Call had decided this Terminator shall be an all-female cast. And their first promotional picture that they put up showed three tough-looking women, one of which being Linda Hamilton, another one being... uh, I would say Asian descent woman looking all badass and then a gender uh, neutral looking female with cybernetic markings on her that I would almost swear is probably the female Terminator <laughs> for this film. I'm not, I'm not sure what she is. Have you seen the the, the, I, the I picture haven't. yet? I haven't. Um, you just told me about it a couple nights ago and it actually ruined the rest of my fucking night when you told me. Look, I'm not I'm not sexist. I'm not a misogynist. I don't, I'm not, you know, all this, uh, the, the t- <laughs> yeah, it's all the same time you did. Um, no, look, I'm not one of those people that's going to bitch and moan because it's all female. However, it's fucking Terminator. You can't do all female Terminator. You know what I mean? So I just, I can't get over the fact that they're trying to do a gender neutral Terminator. Like, the only fucking way it's going to look gender neutral without the flesh covering on it is if it looks like Johnny Five from fucking Short Circuit. That's the only goddamn way that you're going to have a gender neutral Terminator. I, 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 that's all there is to it. I, I, found, I found the photo. I'm trying to pull it up now. Oh, God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it to you. Oh, Agridad says, does the bot shut down for seven days a month? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. I love this guy. All views and opinions of, uh, of, our <laughs> of base, Agridad Gaming. Of Agridad Gaming. Our <laughs> fan base does not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Realm of the Mist Entertainment, although we probably agree with them on some cases. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I'm sending you it now. Sending it to me? Yeah, I sent it to your Facebook. Right. I'm, I know we can't put it up on the uh, on the stream, but I encourage people to look up uh, female, Terminator sequel first look unites Linda Hamilton. You'll you'll find the photo that I'm talking about. I'm looking. What the hell? That's that's the first promotional uh, picture of the all female mm. cast. 
Mm. Now you see what I mean. You got old. You got old grandma uh, Linda Hamilton. Yeah. And then you've got the, I'm assuming, uh, uh, some undisclosed uh, minor uh, my, minority uh, female character. And then you've got female Justin Bieber in the center. <laughs> well, I thought Justin Bieber was a female to begin with. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, it's uh... – Hagerdad says, uh, I wouldn't say it, it's my opinion. Uh, I'm a bit of a comic, and if uh, shit I say offends you, fuck off. That's about where we're at on the spectrum. Again. That's about we, it, yeah. He, again, you know, uh, what he says does not reflect Realm of the Miss Entertainment. <laughs> or- <laughs> However, we usually agree with him, and in this case, we agree with him. Yep. You don't like it? Fuck off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, um, look, I just... I'm, I'm just, I'm sick and tired. Like, when's the last time we had a good Terminator movie? Like, in my opinion, Judgment Day. I didn't care for Rise of the Machines. Salvation was shit. Genesis, Genesis, Geonosis, whatever the fuck it's called, was shit. I just... I agree I'm, with three. I agree with uh, Genesis. I really didn't have too much of an issue with Salvation. See, I didn't care. For, I, did, I just... Mm, no, Judgment Day was the shit. My my prop, you know, Terminator 2 was absolutely the shit. But yeah. my, my only problem with Genesis was it was predictable. Yeah. Yes, it, it was. wasn't a bad film. It was just predictable. Yeah. Yeah. No, you just, know what I mean? It, it, when do you hit the point where you look at a franchise that, that you know, is it used to be great? And when do you look at it and go, it's time to try to redo this the right way? You know, uh, I mean, it's. Agar Dad is correct. Agar, uh, the TV show, the Sarah Connor Chronicles was great as well. Oh, was it? I didn't watch any of the Sarah Connor Chronicles. I didn't watch as much of it as I wanted to. I'm not sure if it's canon either. I didn't watch as much of it as I wanted to because it was it was one of those shows that I think it was like when it came on, it was conflicting with other shows I was keeping track of at mm-hmm. the time. Yeah. So I, it kind of fell by the wayside to me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, from what I understand, it was always a great show. Probably one of those shows that canceled way too early. Mm. But yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Terminator 3 was unnecessary. Terminator Genesis was absolutely unnecessary. You well, know, see, especially with, with Genesis, they they like if you go online, like you can go right here, right to YouTube, and you can look up side by side comparisons of the original Terminator and Terminator Genesis. Those scenes where they kind of recreated him for Genesis, and you can watch them side by side. They're nothing alike. They're literally nothing alike. You know, um, it's just like well, one of the guy's the... haircut is wrong. Like it's just the clothing wasn't the same. Like it it made no sense whatsoever. You know. Well, the, the 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 Genesis part of it, like the movie, that movie just it fucked up everything that was Terminator. Like, yeah, I could even forgive Terminator Three, uh, to to this extent, but Terminator Genesis really fucked everything up. Turning John Connor into a nanobot Terminator bad guy, mm-hmm. the hero of the human race is now a Terminator. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just, you know, uh, Skynet now being born from a fucking mobile app instead of a a missile defense system that became self-aware. Yeah. Now it's a mobile app that sent a fucking virus through the internet. Yeah, you got to keep up with the times, bud. (laughs) You fucked up the story. Yeah. You fucked up everything that the story stood for. It's just watered down at this point. Yeah. You know, it's like. I don't, I'm... It's Angry Birds Skynet edition. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's awesome! You, you fucked up the story, like, I'd play and, that. And, and and now since you fucked up the story, what's what's the answer to fix it? Let's do the exact, let's rehash the exact same bullshit that didn't work in other franchises. Yeah. Well, see, look, okay, look with with um, Ghostbusters answer the call, right? I'm one of those people that like I have a different opinion than a lot of people. First off, I didn't like it. Okay, so don't just don't just I'm gonna no, your, put that out your there. Your thing first. is not that different from uh, anybody well, else. But I still laughed at certain points of it. Um, there were some things that happened in it that that made me laugh. Were they really fucked up though? And I don't even want to say it was the full female cast. It was part of the cast was the problem. The people they chose. But the cast was the, the problem. Cast. Not the fact that it was all female. Right, the exactly. cast they chose. But if it had been a sequel to the original Ghostbusters instead of a, like, hard reboot. Well, I don't even want to say a hard reboot, like a pseudo-reboot. I guess it was more of a hard reboot, wasn't it? And you put, I don't, and I don't you put even know what the hell to call it. Yeah, no, like, you put the you put Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson and uh, 
uh, Bill, Bill, Murray. Bill Murray in. And they were as... completely – you put them in as their own characters. Had they made uh, you know cameos as Venkman uh, – Winston and Winston Ray. Winston and Ray, yeah. Had they made th- those, you know, respectful cameos, I would have had, you know, and not made fucking Chris Hemsworth this idiot of a fucking model, you know, this this pretty boy, all looks, no brains, receptionist. I'd have been all right with it, you know, and, and switch out some of the cast members, for the love of God, you know, because I'm not a big, I, I, well, I'm not even to say I'm a big Melissa McCarthy fan. I'm not a Melissa McCarthy fan. So, I just... Look, there's two people. In, there's two people in the entertainment industry that have pulled off uh, that that play the uh, overweight, loudmouth woman scenario, and that's Melissa McCarthy and Roseanne Barr. You know the difference between the two is, at least Roseanne was funny. <laughs> True. Melissa McCarthy is not funny in anything. She is. Uh, Mike and Molly. Uh, what's that new bullshit movie now where she supposedly goes back to the uh, to to college? Uh, you know, and uh, Ghostbusters answer the call. Nothing she has been in has ever been funny. Mm-hmm. Like, why beat around the bush? You really want to tank the Ghostbusters next? Ghost all female Ghostbusters movie. Put Amy Poehler in there. In uh, in in uh, somebody who uh, can't even write her own jokes. Somebody who can't even write her own jokes. Yeah. Put glasses on her and make her the uh, the key master. Well, see, or they, even better, they did touch on likes, that though in that Ghostbusters. She, since she likes to grab her crotch so much, how about Amy Poehler is uh, Zool? <laughs> With a flat top. With the flat top. Got to give her yeah. the flat top. The flat top belongs in my generation of Ghostbusters, <laughs> not yours. Nimble little minx, isn't she? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> if you want unfunny women in your movies, that's what happens. Uh, let's see. Agridad says, Melissa McCarthy was funny in Gilmore Girls. Yes, I've seen every episode. That show was fucking great. Yeah, but the, was the show was the show funny or was Melissa McCarthy funny? <laughs> like, there, there's there's been films where I've seen movies where like I can't stand a particular actor in it, but the writing and the uh, ensemble cast made it good, mm-hmm. even if that particular actor who I think is shit was in it. You know, uh, perfect example I can give is I pretty much hate anything Nicolas Cage is in, but I have seen particular movies where the movie was good. Despite the fact that it had Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that with the Gilmore Girls, I guess it's kind of that's the question was was Gilmore G- Girls funny and good because it was the Gilmore Girls, or was it funny and good because Melissa McCarthy was in it? Yeah. Well, anyway, moving on. Was that all you wanted to talk about on uh, Terminator, bud? Yeah, that's all I wanted on the Terminator. I okay. wanted to get your opinion about uh, about this direction. Just, is just, this going just to be fucking rebooted this, already? Yeah, just, is this going to be a right just, choice to just do? Just rip the fucking bandaid off and reboot the motherfucker already. Well, it's all get, right, let's get it happen. Let let's let's play let's play a little scenario game then. Let's say they did reboot it. Do you think the fans will be accepting of a rebooted Terminator without Arnold Schwarzenegger as the T eight hundred? Uh, you're going to have these fans that these purist fans from the, well, first off, Agridad says, so could have Ryan Reynolds have been, uh, made Green Lantern good because he was good. He was good in it. And he, I yeah, think he, was. the, he wasn't the problem with Green Lantern. No, he wasn't. In fact, I think he gave Hal Jordan a lot more personality than Hal Jordan deserved. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but yeah, but it was as, the writing that destroyed that. But, but as far as a rebooted Terminator without Arnold Schwarzenegger, you're going to have this sect of fans, right? That he says Dwayne Johnson is the Terminator. Uh, because, I can actually Because see he it. hasn't been in another movie yet this week. Um, so <laughs> you could <laughs> – you're going to have these this sect of fans that is like, oh, that's hashtag not my Terminator. You can't do Terminator without Arnold, blah, blah, blah. Because then they're going to be crying, well, you know, RoboCop, you know, and, which the, the rebooted RoboCop wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. You know what I mean? Look, Agrodad, out of all the people that you're talking about, like I could see the I could see the rock, uh, not not Vin Diesel. If I were gonna make anybody who is really buff be the Terminator, and yes, I'll I'll for once go against what I normally say about a character that was previously written for one particular type of char- uh, person. I think Terry Crews would make an awesome Terminator. He would. Uh, I would almost go with and go with me on this. I would almost go with Dave Bautista. Not so much Dave Bautista, but think? I could. 
No, but I could I could see Aquaman, uh, Jason Momoa. Uh, if you cut his hair and take off the beard. I, I, w- I would accept Terry Crews before I would either of those. Yeah, I would accept Terry Crews. I think he'd be a pretty badass. Ter- That's something that I, you know, I, I wouldn't be against it. But you're still going to have those people that it's... I mean, look at Star Wars, right? Look, look at this. Yeah. Look at. I mean, we will we, be. We will be in a minute. We're, we're getting there. But I mean, look at the fan base for Star Wars right now, right? As soon as they do something that the fan base doesn't like, holy shit! Hashtag not my Skywalker. Blah blah blah. What the fuck ever. Like, well, that's that's my you're point. You're gonna have that with Terminator. Even, do you think the fans would even accept that they rebooted the original Terminator, and it's not Arnie playing the T eight hundred standing there in the police station, going, "I'll be back." People would get over it. Because the you know fan base for Star Wars, that, that's really apples and oranges. Because the fan base for Star Wars is a different beast of a fan base than what Terminator is. Right. So, yeah, I, I, you're going to hear about it at first. But at, after the movie comes out and you get to the sequel, it's done. You're not going to have people bitching about it. All right. Well, speaking of Star Wars, let, let's get into this. Now, I'm going to put it up right here that there's going to be some possible spoilers in here. Uh, so anybody who is looking forward to Episode Nine or the Ryan Johnson trilogy of Star Wars films, yes, we are going into Star Wars right now. It is possible spoilers, but I will say take things with a grain of salt because nothing has been confirmed by Lucasfilm as of yet. Mm-hmm. At least not that I have found. I have not found it on MakingStarWars.net or or StarWars.com or anything like that yet. Normally, the the, the true sources for for uh, this type of information. But there's enough reporting about it around that I can't necessarily ignore it either to at least bring it to attention for discussion. And that is, there is rumors going around that two things. One, that Kathleen Kennedy is silently being uh, stepping down or being fired from Lucasfilm Limited. And number two, Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy has been shit-canned. Uh... They say that part of the reasoning that the, uh, that this is uh, reporting is because of the fact that there was a Obi Wan prequel to introduce new characters uh, that has been shit canned and that has been confirmed by uh, Ewan McGregor himself that that has been sidelined that there are no plans for the Obi Wan film uh, and that was reported today. Mm-hmm. Uh, now again, it's coming from numerous numerous sources: comicbooks.com, comicbooknews.com. Uh, places like that. These places are not necessarily just like uh, Mike Zeroth, for for a sake of argument, where you know it's pretty much garbage. Oh, zero. Yeah, Mike Zero. Oh, where, where, where you know, that kid's where you know, still around. Yeah, he's still around. He's still <laughs> pretend like he actually has an inside to something. So it, it's coming from sources where it's not necessary. It's almost a gray area. Like I don't necessarily think they got the the down track, especially since it hasn't been initially announced yet. However, I take it with a little bit more seriousness than I would if it was just coming from like Geeks and Gamers or Mike Zero. What do you think about the rumors going around about right. uh, about both Ryan, the loss of the Ryan Johnson trilogy and the stepping down or firing of Kathleen Kennedy? Okay, here's the thing. There's there's a lot to this that we have to unbox, so I'm going to go through this bit by bit. All right, so okay. first, off, first off, the Obi-Wan film thing, right? Being shit canned. Okay. Let, yep. Let's touch on that first. Do I believe that there was an Obi-Wan film in production? Yes, I do believe that there was at some point. Do I believe there is now? Not necessarily. Uh, the reason behind that, and I don't think it has anything to do with how well Solo did, or how well Solo didn't do, I should say, a box office-wise. I don't think it has anything to do with Kathleen Kennedy. I don't think it has anything to do with the fan base. We have these stories coming out now that Episode Nine uh, could possibly be two films. That they're filming 9 and 10 back-to-back, or 9 part 1, part 2 back-to-back, whatever the fuck they're going to call it. They better not call it 9 one, nine, two. They better call it 9 and 10. But anyway. Right. Because they said they came out today and said that the principal photography for episode 9 will be finished in February. That's a hell of a fucking shoot, right? So, it's not a year like what they did with Avengers, but it's, it's still a hell of a fucking shoot. Because they started on right. my birthday. That's what? That's six months of filming. That's about right for a, film, for, for a single film. But anyway. So... That's why I believe the Obi-Wan film is on the back burner. Because if they're doing it in two films, then it's going to be episode 9, episode 10, a year apart, back-to-back, Decembers. Okay? I I feel like episode 10 is going to take the place of what Obi-Wan would have been. Where it would have been. 
As far as Kathleen Kennedy being removed quietly, there's no removing Kathleen Kennedy quietly. That's that's fucking impossible at this point. There's no goddamn way she's just gonna slip away and nobody's gonna fucking notice. All right. Right. That's that's one of these things where if it's happening, it's fucking happening. Now, the same people are reporting that Ryan Johnson's trilogy is shit canned and that she is getting shit canned at the exact same time. It's the same story. They go hand in hand. And the only reason I don't believe Ryan Johnson's trilogy is shit canned is because I don't believe the Kathleen Kennedy part of it. I don't think they're going to shit can her after one film of Solo. Because, I mean, think about it, right? You had episode seven. Uh, did episode seven joined the $2 billion club, didn't it? I think it did. Think yeah, it did. Yeah, 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 yeah. It went over $2 billion. <clears throat> okay, so Force Awakens, $2 billion, right? Rogue One, uh-huh. over a billion dollars. Uh, Last Jedi, over a billion dollars. Right there, Disney's made their money back on Lucasfilm. Right there, that's it. That Just on the films alone, they've made their money back, right? So, Solo comes along, and this is this would be what? the Solo was what, the fourth film they've released since the, the reboot? Or not the reboot, right. but the, the buyout. You're still rocking a 75% success, success rate so far, right? They're not going to fire her after one fucking movie. After one movie where some people got pissy and moany and decided we're going to boycott the movie. That No, that they're not going to boycott her over that. You know what I mean? As far as Ryan Johnson goes, he is not fucking shit canned. He made a Star Wars movie that brought in over a billion dollars. That a vast, vast portion of the Star Wars fan base considers the best Star Wars movie ever. If not best, second best only to Empire, right? There's no goddamn way. The only reason you have these people bitching about Last Jedi is because they're more vocal than we are. I mean, you and I both like Last Jedi, minus a couple of little things in it, like you with the the social justice warrior stuff, and you know, and I and I had a couple of problems with it, but it's nothing like, it's nothing to make the movie shitty for me. You know, I love watching Last Jedi, so I don't believe for a second that Ryan Johnson's trilogy is is canceled because hell, he's already through pre-production on it he started pre-production on it before episode nine even started filming so i i don't think that they're going to start doing that and then just shit can it right i just i just i don't see it happening because if they shit can ryan johnson right if you've got the fan base so riled up at this point where they don't want anything new from anybody that's come before why the fuck are you going to hire benioff and weiss to do a series of films you know what i mean like why does why is that one still going you know, they're going to do new characters. Everybody's just like, the only reason nobody's crying about Benioff and Weiss is because everybody thinks they're doing Old Republic. That's the only reason. And everybody wants fucking Old Republic for some reason. Well, that and the fact you that know? everybody knows everybody knows the success rate of Benioff and Weiss with the Game of Thrones series. Yeah, but look at Ryan Johnson's success rate with Star Wars. Yeah, people bitch about the movie, but that vocal minority is are the ones that's fucking everything up for the rest of us. That movie still made over a billion dollars whether they want to admit it or not. Look, look, okay, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna address some of what you said here. Okay. Uh, to an extent, I agree with you. I don't, I don't, necess- I don't necessarily believe the uh, Kathleen Kennedy thing. I could see the Ryan Johnson thing because there was so much hate. And quite honestly, why I would even give the, uh, a, a chance of, of believing this shit is the fact that I think Disney and Lucasfilm – have been absolutely wrong in the way they've handled their PR with people's dislike of of uh, the Last Jedi of Solo, uh, you know whether it was the vocal minority or not. Uh, how they how they've handled well, get over it, you cry babies, you know, or your opinion doesn't matter, you know, uh, whether we have an all female cast or not, that's our business, not yours. You're wrong if you don't like it. You're just a sexist, but not misogynist. The way they've handled the situation with with the disgruntledness of their fan base has been a PR nightmare. So to an extent, I would say if this shit is happening, maybe not necessarily a firing or or change or 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 getting rid of Ryan Johnson or stepping down Kathleen Kennedy, but maybe Bob Iger came in. Now, now hear me out on this. Maybe Bob Iger, Iger came in and said, we need to take Star Wars in a new direction. Mm hmm. Because you guys are fucking it up. Well, at the same time, though, you're looking at the guy that was still praising Ryan Johnson before Last Jedi came out. Even he sat down and was saying, this is going smoothly. This is great. I had a great time with Last Jedi. Now, granted, he might be able to take his own biasness out of it and say, just because I like it doesn't mean everybody else does. Right. However, however, let's play. I'll, I'll play devil's advocate for a minute. Okay. Would that be such a bad thing at this point? But, and at the same time, 
who would you get to replace Kathleen Kennedy? And and don't say Dave Filoni because he's busy with his own shit right now. John Favreau. You think John Favreau? Well, we'll see here's... if I can't if I can't have Filoni, my next choice would be Favreau here's... because next to, next to Filoni, there's two other people that I would believe have the same vision as as uh, as Kevin Smith. Uh, or yeah, excuse me, as Kevin Smith, as George Lucas, <laughs> as far as what Star Wars is supposed to be, and that would be either John Favreau or Kevin Smith. The only reason I wouldn't put Kevin Smith in that role is because Star Wars would turn into two buddies standing at a convenience store. <laughs> hey, hey, lady, you ever had your asshole <laughs> licked by a fat guy in a trench coat? Um, but no, Yo, babe, like, you ever had your asshole, your your exhaust port licked by a stormtrooper? <laughs> but uh, and Favreau's busy though. Yeah. Favreau's busy. He's working on his live action series. He's got ten episodes. He's got to produce. He's got ten episodes. He's got to fucking write. You know, he's uh, he's probably Favreau greenlit can't. for. Agro dad, I'd, I'd fucking, fucking watch, watch that. that. <laughs> but you, uh, you've got Favreau busy with right. however many seasons of his show he's going to do. Filoni's busy with Resistance because we now know, by the way, it did come out that Resistance takes place six months before Force Awakens. Right. It, it is six months. I was thinking it was like five years, but it's actually six months. So Resistance can't run all that long, right? Right. Unless it runs into the films and it's kind of doing this, you know, overlaying. It's happening the same time as the movies, right? Which right. I, I don't think it's. I don't think that's what they're going for. But anyway, he says all oh, goddamn day. Yeah, but well, if, I, I imagine they probably will overlap it into the movie in some way. I think that the, well, hell, the new Clone Wars series this uh, season is definitely going to overlap in Episode Three. I'm convinced of it at this point. At um, least, at least it's going to end with. Again, like I said, Anakin and Obi Wan getting the call that the Chancellor has been kidnapped. I think it's going to end with Order sixty six from the point of view of the clones. I really that. think it's going to, because you're going to see Ahsoka get attacked by clone troopers by the five hundred first. You're going to see Ahsoka get attacked, and she's going to run <laughs> off. Like that's going to happen. If Kevin Smith did, uh, I'd bet money that someone takes a bong out of, <laughs> out of BB eight. Takes a bong out of BB eight. That I now that I'd pay to see. Oh my god. <laughs> I want to see somebody take a bong rip out of BB-8. B-bong-8. B-bong-8. <laughs> He's shaped like a ping-bong ball. Anyway. Oh, yeah. but look, look, look. If, if I, I can make ever, dad jokes all day. I don't give a shit. If Kevin Smith ever made a Star Wars movie, I want him to recast Mark Hamill, not as Luke Skywalker, though. I want Cockknocker. Cockknocker. Cockknocker is canon. But, <laughs> but seriously, like, who who would replace... Kathleen Kennedy at this point and who's been tested who I mean the only person that anybody would accept at this point as far as the fan base goes is Filoni but he's busy you know what about JJ outside outside of the fact Mm. that episode outside of the fact that episode seven was a little too close to episode four in rhyming people are bitching about him directing nine now they were singing his praises when they found out that it wasn't going to be Ryan Johnson oh JJ's going to save the trilogy He's going to wreck on all the shit that, which I do agree, he's going to wreck well, on. Well, they would have said that about anybody other than Ryan Johnson. They could have been saying it about Colin. If Colin Trevorrow was still on, people would be like, "Oh, thank God he's directing it. He's going to retcon everything Ryan Johnson did," which they're not going to fucking do. They're not going to fucking retcon shit. The uh-huh. only thing, the only thing they're going to fucking even touch on is is Ray's parents. Everything else happened, whether you fucking like it or not, it happened. Oh, it all happened. I'm I'm not yeah. saying retconning in the sense of like. You know, all of a sudden Han's not dead and Leia never did the fucking uh, Mary Poppins thing out in space. You know, I'm not saying that Luke didn't die force projecting himself across the galaxy. I'm not saying that shit gets retconned. I'm talking about things like Ray's parents. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about things like uh, that the only leadership left in in the resistance is female. Yeah. You know, uh, like that. Kelly Marie trans character is an important role. I think she's an important focus for Finn, but I don't, I think she's a secondary role. Mm -hmm. And again, that's not a shot at Kelly Kelly Marie trans. Oh no. It's a shot at the character. The character was not good. And I think JJ has seen that the character is not good. I I read somewhere. I think it was on Facebook somewhere. Somebody had a, might've been a comment on something. I think it's what it was. I don't remember if it was on a YouTube video, a Facebook post or what, but somebody did have an interesting idea. Uh, And and if they did it, I swear to God, I'd be pissed off. I I, I would be so pissed. Somebody had the idea. And obviously it was somebody who hated last Jedi. Okay. Because of what the idea was. So as soon as I say, you'd be like, Oh yeah, they fucking hated it. Okay. Somebody had the idea that episode nine picks up, 
right where episode seven left off. And all of episode eight was a vision that Luke had after Ray handed him the lightsaber where if he didn't go help her, that's what was going to happen. And so he changes his mind and he starts training her the way everybody wanted it to fucking be. And that the all of episode eight was just a vision that Luke had where if he didn't go help, this is what was going to happen. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and do what you got to do. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You f- fucking dumbasses, man. Edgar Dad says that's a cop out, and it so it totally is. That is totally a cop out. Look, my, my fan theories didn't work, so you have to make episode nine completely erase episode eight, and we'll call it a bad dream. So, yeah. Luke, Sky, Luke Skywalker had bad tacos and blue milk. <laughs> it was green milk. You know what I mean? It, it just it, it, Look, if you're this type of person who actually buys into theories like this or, or wants theories like this, do the world a favor. Stop watching Star Wars. Yeah. Go watch fucking Twilight or something. All right, just just step away from Star Wars because you 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 give the fan base a bad name. Look, I'm not saying you're right or wrong if you liked or disliked the Last Jedi. There's a lot I didn't like about Solo. Star Wars is allowed to make a bad movie. Mm-hmm. It's not the end of the franchise. It's not the end of Star Wars as we know it. It didn't destroy my childhood if they make a movie that I didn't necessarily care for. You want proof of that? Attack of the fucking clones. <laughs> I knew I knew that you were going there with that. Attack of the clones before the arguments about Solo and before the arguments about The Last Jedi was the worst Star Wars movie of all time. And yet... The saga moved on. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck over it. Yeah. God almighty. See, look, okay. Here, here's my mentality on it, right? We are going to get bad Star Wars movies. That's just, that's going to happen once in a while. We're going to get one and it's like, oh, well, they really shot themselves in the foot with that one. That's going to happen, right? Am mm-hmm. I going to tear my clothes and scream at the top of my lungs into the sky like liberals did when Trump was elected president and just scream because the world is ending. No, I'm not like, look, I love one of my favorite videos to watch. Oh God. Yeah. No, (laughs) but look, I love the new Canon personally. Okay. I, I tried keeping up with the old EU when I was a kid. I just couldn't keep up with it. I gave up on it. I've, I have a new chance with this Canon, right? This new, I've got all my Canon novels. Everything's in chronological order right there all the way around the corner. Do I love everything in it? No, I don't love everything. Like fucking, the first aftermath was kind of rough to get through. Canobite wasn't the greatest, you know, heir to the fucking Jedi. Like, there's shit in there that doesn't belong in there, right? And that's going to happen with the films, too, all right? And as much as I love Star Wars, as much as it has shaped my life, right? I mean, everything in this fucking room is Star Wars. You can't see it, but on that wall, I've got all my, like, Black Series figures hanging up on the wall. Star Wars has shaped my life in a way. It's got me through some of the hardest times in my life. Some of Yoda's advice, you know, train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. Do or do not. There is no try. Failure is the greatest teacher. Like, a lot of that stuff has gotten me through some of the hardest points of my life, right? Lost the planet Obi-Wan has. Lost the planet Obi-Wan has. Like, who the fuck? How embarrassing. Which, I suddenly, I felt so much better because I couldn't find my car in the fucking parking lot at Walmart. Because (laughs) Obi-Wan lost the planet. Suddenly, I feel better. But, you know, like, it's going to happen. But getting pissed off about it. And boycotting and ranting and raving isn't going to fix it. You know, it's you got to keep in mind at the same time. Yes, I love these characters. I love what it's done for my life. But it's a fucking movie. It is a fucking movie. It is a movie. It is a collection of images strung together at 24, 30 frames a second. So 60, depending on what fucking theater you're in to make them look like they're moving with a CD soundtrack with it. That's all it fucking is. You know, like these people... They, it was just them at work. You're watching the security camera footage of them at work. That's all, that's all you're watching. So, you know, I am, I'm not going to lose my fucking mind over it, you know, cause I know this is a, this is a, a universe that doesn't actually exist. It exists in our brains and our hearts, right? We, we right. love this. We love this franchise, but at the same time, 
it's not the end of the fucking world. Like, it's not like if we get a bad Star Wars movie, there's going to be a fucking meteor take out the Earth. And it's going to be Dinosaur Extinction version 2.0. It's not going to fucking happen. You know, the world will keep turning. Well, you, I think you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, uh, in the in the new trilogy, uh, the, the new the new canon, like you, you know, with the books and everything else, there have been great books: Lost Stars, Leia, oh, yeah. uh, Thrawn, Thrawn Alliances, thus Bloodline. far, Bloodline. You know, there have been there have been great books, but then there have been garbage books like Heir to the Jedi, Ugh. or what, which would be more fitting to what we're talking about with Last Jedi right now. It didn't destroy the trilogy nor the saga. Because if that was the case, Aftermath would have killed the Aftermath trilogy. Yeah. But, guess what? The EU was no better. As great as Heir to the Empire's trilogy was. As great as the Hand of Thrawn trilogy was. As great as the uh, 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 Rise of the uh, of the uh, the New Jedi. Darth uh, Bane. With, with, with Darth Bane. Or, or the Rise of, of, of Luke training the first generation of the next generation of Jedi and stuff of that nature. As much as those stories were cool, they killed Chewbacca with a fucking moon. Chewbacca got crushed by a moon. You had the Yuzan Vong. You had fucking Yasmari creatures that created bubbles that repelled the force. There was plenty of garbage in the EU. And guess what? It still didn't destroy Star Wars. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, hell, even Heir to the Jedi was supposed to be in the EU originally. Originally. I mean, that was supposed to be a legend. It is a legend. Well, yeah. It, it is, is a legend, but... It, it's but not before, in my head, Canon. Be, before, before they, before they uh, uh, created the new canon, when Disney bought everything out, Heir to the Jedi was the only thing that, by Timothy Zahn, mm-hmm. was the only thing recognized by Lucasfilm and George Lucas himself as a sequel to the Star Wars trilogy. Ever see Big Bang Theory when episode 7 comes out, the guys invite Will Wheaton to go see the movie and with them and he shows up in a Star Trek uniform and he makes a great point. Will explains that he is enjoying himself and that his point is that the that people shouldn't take Star Wars movies so seriously and that if the movie is bad, it shouldn't ruin their life. That's it. That's absolutely true. I have not seen that episode, but that is and, absolutely true. But I like Agard, however, I like Agard's comment before that, too. The bad Star Wars movie has to come in the middle of the trilogy so there can be a redemption film. You're absolutely He's right. right about that, and, too, yeah. And here's another one for you guys, too. Everybody, everybody, I, I've said this numerous times, and I'll say this again. Episode 8 is in the middle of a trilogy. Yeah. The middle act of a of a story is supposed to be where everything goes to shit you don't like the way uh last jedi ended great back in 1980 a lot of people hated the way empire strikes back ended empire didn't become the greatest star wars movie of all time until return of the jedi until everybody saw how the story finished Mm -hmm. that is when empire became the greatest star wars movie of all time because then it made sense give jedi a chance let episode nine Tell what eight and seven were. Here's the problem, though, right? Star Wars is coming out in a, in a generate for a generation now, in a time period where think about back in the '80s, right? You had to wait three fucking years for the next movie to come out, right? And people understood that. Well, we're not going to get to see the next one for you know for three more years. Let's just wait and see how it turns out. But we live in a generation and a world today where everything is just instant gratification. Instant gratification. You want it? You want it now. I got to have it right now. I'm not waiting three days for it to fucking get here What if I order it through the mail. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, well, that's the good That's the, the good and the bad of it, though, because yeah. you think people you think people back in 1980 weren't speculating whether or not Luke was actually the son right. of Darth Vader. Right. Of course they were. The problem was is you didn't have the Internet shoving fan theories down everybody's fucking throat yep. to where they start believing the bullshit and then get their expectations lowered when they go to see Empire Strikes Back in 83. Yep. It's so true. you're absolutely right. What's ruining it is the fucking internet culture that expects instant gratification and then, of course, this millennial mentality yeah. of everything's got to go my way and be the way I want or it's trash. Yeah. You're destroying your own mythos. See, I understand people don't like Last Jedi. I, I get that. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 I completely understand that. And I don't begrudge people that whatsoever. You're allowed to like and dislike something that, you know, I have the opposite opinion of. I'm not going to begrudge you or think you're a piece of shit person, human being, because you have a different opinion than me. You I know? will. Well, I know you will. But <laughs> anyway, I will. I don't care. No, go but, ahead. I'm sorry. But I'm not I'm not going to begrudge anybody that. 
And can I see why some people didn't like it? Yeah, I, I get where they're coming from. You know, they wanted to see a badass Luke Skywalker swinging a lightsaber, taking names, fucking motherfuckers up. You know, let's say, and you're, I'm Luke motherfucking Skywalker, bitch, and you start fucking people up. I get it. That's what everybody <sighs> let me, wanted. But let me give you let me give you a line from pretty much every Star Wars movie Lay up until me. that point. It's not the Jedi way. Yeah, exactly. What Luke That's did in it. Episode Eight was exactly. The fucking Jedi way. Maybe not leading up when he was feeling sorry for himself and trying to isolate from the world. Yep. But what he did to stop the First Order and save the Rebellion, because mm -hmm. at that point the Resistance became the Rebellion, what he did was exactly the Jedi way. That is the badass Luke Skywalker you yeah. were begging for. And, and think about it this way, too. Think about Luke Skywalker as, as, as a character, right? Let's, let's put yourself in Luke Skywalker's shoes. Uh -huh. The only example you ever knew of how to handle your order being destroyed is to go into exile because that's what Yoda did. That's what Obi-Wan did. That's the only thing he knew what to do. That's what Yoda and Obi-Wan told him to do. Now, did Yoda and Obi-Wan come back and say, hey, you need to get the fuck off your ass and go out there and fix this? Probably, yeah. But Yoda and Obi-Wan didn't have that. You know, I mean, they had Qui-Gon, but mm -hmm. Qui-Gon was more interested in Luke surviving, right? Because, I mean, Obi-Wan thought Luke was the chosen one, right? He didn't think it was Anakin anymore. But Luke had no nothing else to go off of except what Obi Wan did. You know, he went into exile. You know, and, and that's the only thing he he removed himself from the equation. And and sure, I mean, think about it. What did the Force ever do for Luke? What, it brought like, a what, pain and misery. It what, killed exactly, Owen. Exactly. It, killed, it, it took his father away from him. Killed his mother. Killed his aunt and uncle. Yep. Forced him in a world and a war. Where he became the only Jedi left, and when he thought he was doing the right thing, it killed, it took away his nephew and killed all these young, uh, young Padawans. Yeah, that's a lot of weight for one guy. Yeah, why the fuck wouldn't you cut yourself off from the Force? Who like, only fuck who this. only wanted to go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters? Well, even the the novelization of Last Jedi touches on <laughs> even on Octu, he was having dreams of still living on Tatooine. What had happened if I'd never left? I, you know, he'd have been married. He'd have been on a moisture farm. None of this other shit would have happened to him. You know, exactly. that's he, he was having dreams about that. That's what he wanted. He wished he'd have never gotten mixed up in all of it. You know, uh -huh. and when you have that much just consistent fucking slapping you over the head with a cinder block bad happening to you, what the fuck else are you supposed to do? A human brain, brain can only take so much, you know? That's exactly it. I mean, he was never he was never a warrior, which is why he was a perfect Jedi. He was never a warrior. You know, he, he, he dreamed about being a warrior as a young kid, but we all do. We all, I mean, think about when we were kids. We all ran around with our toy guns or our toy lightsabers and dreamed of being Jedis and soldiers and, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the case may be. That, that, that's the childhood boy dream. So, of course, he dreamed of being a pilot who fought in great wars and shit like that. Yeah. You know, but once he got a taste of it, he realized, <laughs> I'm right here. Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh, once you got a taste of what that type of life is like, of course you start going back to, you know what? I missed the days where I just sat around talking with my friends. Yeah. You know, and the hardest thing I had to do was scrape mushrooms off of, uh, off of evaporators. moisture evaporators. Yeah. yeah. I mean, any, that's what anybody's going to do. So what did Luke do? He went back into isolation. He went somewhere where he'd be living essentially the same life as he would have been on Tatooine. Just, you know, a little cooler, a little more humid, you know? So, and, and all the green milk he could drink. Well, it would so, have been blue back on Tatooine. Right, but I mean, it colored milk. All the colored milk he could drink, right? Yeah. <laughs> Taste so, the rainbow. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, shit. So, what happened to Luke Skywalker? I mean, th remember what happened to Luke in the EU? He joined the fucking dark side. Yeah. You know, I mean, gr granted, I will give you that. It was for good intentions. He joined the dark side with good intentions. But so the fuck did Anakin? Well, let's be fair. Yeah, you know? Anakin... Anakin killed younglings to save his wife. Yeah. You know, and it took Leia to bring him back. Mm hmm So, I mean, you can't talk about Luke having... The EU Luke was this great messiah that never did anything wrong. You can't go there, you know? Luke's still fucked up even in, in the EU. Yeah. Look at all the mistakes he did in the EU before he became Grandmaster. Yeah. He made a lot of mistakes, walked into a lot of simple traps and everything else... Luke was not a perfect character. He never was, but that was part of what made Luke a perfect character was that he was perfectly imperfect. Yeah. You know, and, and he, I feel like that's what they carried on with with Last Jedi. Luke Skywalker was an everyman character. 
Yeah. We're supposed to find a little bit of all of us within him. Yep. Every single one of us dreamed about getting out of the bad situation that we're in and becoming heroes. Luke did that. We've all also been in situations where we start thinking back to our home and back to when life was simpler and when we were happy. Yeah. Especially when shit goes wrong in our lives. Exactly as Luke did in The Last Jedi. Yep. And guess what? We all hope that when push comes to shove and when all the chips are down, we'll step up for that one last time. Yeah. Like Luke did in The Last Jedi. Luke Skywalker fulfilled his story arc exactly as the character was designed to do. Yep. Well, I mean, and also think about this also, right? These people who are pissed off with where Luke went in Last Jedi, what the fuck did you expect? After Episode 7 came out, Han told us in Episode 7 where Luke was, the mentality Luke was in, what Luke did, uh-huh. what happened to Luke. He told us exactly what happened, you know? So, uh-huh. he, I mean, he told us, you know, Luke blamed himself. He ran away from everything. He shut himself <coughs> out. He went into exile, you know? He he thought Leia blamed, you know, Snoke, and he thought Han blamed him, you know? Like, he thought he blamed himself, right? Right. And Han even told us, you know, he had one apprentice rise up and, and, and tear it all down. He destroyed everything, you know, and Luke ran away for five years. He was in isolation for five or six years. Right. Why did everybody just assume that this random girl that Luke had never seen before? Well, because at the time, everybody thought Luke was her, his daughter. But anyway, well, that's a different story. Right. Why? Why did everybody assume that this random girl was going to show up on his island? Give him his old lightsaber that he lost on Bespin, and everything was just going to be hunky fucking dory, and he was going to turn around and let's go do this, you know? Why was he going to? Why did everybody think he was just going to gung ho give it round two? Because one girl showed up. Look, let 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 let's put it in perspective here. Luke Skywalker, think about this. Really think about this for a minute. From Episode Seven, we like you said, Han said it straight out. One apprentice rised up, killed all his trainees. And, it, and Luke blamed himself for it and ran into isolation and everything else. Mm-hmm. Now, let's really delve into Luke's mentality on this. The son, my nephew, the son of my daughter and my best friend. Sister and best friend. Sister and best friend. Excuse me. Sister and best friend. Murdered in cold blood all these people because I had a momentary uh, lapse of reason. Mm-hmm. Think about that for a second. How would you react? Yeah, no. It's, In it's, his shoes, exactly how would you it. react? See, uh, now granted, Luke said that when he was there sensing uh, Kylo's heart that Snoke had already turned him. You know, now that that was there. But had Luke sensed that and then not had that momentary weakness of activating his lightsaber? That's what woke Kylo up was him activating the saber. Had he not uh-huh. done that, he could have walked out. He wouldn't have lost his temple that night. He could have taken Kylo aside, started working with him differently, you know, trying to isolate him from Snoke, you know, starting to do this other stuff with him. Why the hell couldn't he have done that? I mean, he had that one moment of weakness and that moment of weakness is what cost him everything. Exactly. That's going to weigh down on anybody. That's going to break you. Force or not, Jedi or not, that... That's, that's uh, like like Agrodad just said. What what uh, he did, what Luke does, he acts without thinking. That's exactly it. And he said, in a moment of weakness, just a, just one moment of raw emotion, I thought I could stop it. Now think about this too. Had he actually ended Kylo right there, how would Luke have taken that? What would that have done to him if he had killed Kylo right then and there? What would that have done to Luke? Especially knowing that he's got to face Han and Leia and tell them what Afterwards. he did to their son. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, you're that. absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. And again, it's not the first time Luke has lost control. Yeah. Luke lost control in the end of Return of the Jedi yeah. when Vader was threatening to turn Leia instead of Luke. He turned Dark Side. He defeated Vader with the Dark with Side the dark of the Force. Side. Yep. Oh, that's still look. Not not to get off topic, but that whole monologue right there of Vader talking to Luke about mm-hmm. finding out about Le- that is still to this day my absolute favorite Vader quote. That entire line, you know, that entire, you know, you cannot hide forever, Luke, you know, and, <laughs> and it's just, God, you know, it's still, it's, anyway, I just, that's, that's my absolute favorite Vader line, but you're right, Luke ended that using the dark side of the force, it, just and like, it took, think and about it took that momentary, it took that momentary lapse of, of, of reasoning to defeat Vader, but then when he looked at the arm of Vader, 
that's when he let the anger go through his lightsaber way and became a Jedi. How much, he realized how much he and Vader were alike. That mm-hmm. he was going down that path already. He'd already lost the limb and had a, you know, I mean, he was going down that. But even think about now, Obi-Wan. I haven't, yeah. I haven't read. Now let me let me just finish yeah, yeah, your point. Ahead, ahead. I haven't read, I haven't read the novelization yet. So you could correct me on this if I'm wrong, because I know they go delve more into the detail of characters' mentality uh-huh. in the books than than in the movies. Right. But the, my take of Luke having that momentary lapse of reason in, in Kylo's hut and in, in Ben's hut mm-hmm. was he looked down and he saw the rise of Darth Vader again. Mm-hmm. In in Kylo Ren, he saw what Vader did all over again to the galaxy in Kylo's turn, mm-hmm. and that's where he had that moment. It's like I can end it all right here and make sure the Empire never rises again. That people don't suffer the way they did under the, under the power of Palpatine and Vader. Mm-hmm. But as soon as he ignited his lightsaber, same deal. What the hell am I doing? Yeah, yeah. That's all it was. But in that moment of reason. His dark side turn was for the right reason. The same way as him defeating Vader. Yeah. Using the dark side was Again, for the right reason. He was but, protecting but his like, sister. It seems like everybody. Now, now, granted, we don't know the exact reason Kylo turned to the dark side. We know that Snoke manipulated him, but we don't know what Snoke used to turn into the dark side. The same way Palpatine used the death of Padme to turn Anakin, right? We don't right. know what the catalyst w- actually was for that. Um, I have my theories about it, but I, but it's it's different. So far, everybody, that seems to be their excuse. You know, I turned to the dark side with good intentions. You know, like I, I did it so I could do this for you. You know, well, what um, was the, what's what's the old additive that the uh, the, the road to hell is paid with good intentions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that, and it's completely true, especially in this uh, context, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But see, as far as Kylo turning, you know, we know from the novel Bloodline that uh, he found out with the rest of the galaxy about who his grandfather was. Like, he found out... He didn't hear it from Leia. He didn't hear it from Han. He didn't hear it from Uncle Luke. He heard it from the Holonet with everybody else. Right? right. So I feel like that's what kind of pushed him over the edge a little bit. But we don't know what his turn was. It might have been for good intentions. We don't know. I mean, killing his students doesn't... That seems more like it was a, oh, fuck you, Uncle Luke. You think you can take me out? Watch this, you know? like And just, and just wiped everybody out. <laughs> They was to impress his girlfriend, Cinnamon. Impress, impress his girlfriend. Look, Cinnamon, look what I did for you. <laughs> I told you are I you could do it. Me? Are you proud of me? I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But no, it's it's just it's we. There's so much backstory we don't know yet. You know, there's there's stuff that the novels haven't touched on. There's stuff the films haven't touched on yet. There's there's so many things that I think after episode nine comes out, we're going to get everything kind of filled in. I was talking. Well, that's I, I made a comment to somebody on Facebook today. They were talking about it was one of the Facebook pages. Somebody said something along the lines of uh, there, there was a story talking about resistance, how it's six months before Force Awakens. And they're like, God damn, six fucking months. Like, really? They're really not touching that 35, that 30 year period, are they? And they've touched it more than we really give them credit for. But I think once episode bad, nine bad, comes out, blood, bad, blood uh, bloodline and stuff. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, but I think once episode nine comes out, because think about what we have right now. We've got Timothy Zahn saying that he's go, he's got two more Thrawn novels that he's that he's been commissioned to write, but he's not allowed to talk about them or even announce them until after episode nine comes out, right? Which and Mark sense. Hamill com- and Mark Hamill coming out saying that there is a bunch right. of storylines of Luke Skywalker that are in the way in the wind, yeah. waiting to come out. So, so we're going to get that yeah. time frame between Jedi and mm-hmm. and Force Awakens of Luke Skywalker, where we're going to see him being that Jedi badass, yeah. whether it's comics, it's coming. whether whether it's books or whether it's standalone films, it's coming. It, it, it's coming. So we know that Luke and the Jedi Order, his Jedi Order, were around the same time as the First Order because Snoke was there working on Kylo. So we know Luke knew about the First Order before he went into exile, before the destruction of his temple. We, right. you know, just from context clues. But with the Thrawn thing, I've always had this theory that Thrawn had way more to do with the rise of the First Order than anybody realized. And if Zahn is writing two more Thrawn novels, right? Okay, this is this might be a little spoilery. So if you guys haven't finished the uh, Rebels season four yet, this might be a little spoilery. I'm not going to go into detail. But with the way season four ended, those next two Thrawn novels have to happen after that because of the where uh, Alliances takes place, right? Mm-hmm. Alliances takes place in that part of Rebels between three and four where we didn't see Thrawn a lot. So now with the way season four ended, these next two Thrawn novels have to happen after that. 
So before those novels come out, before episode nine comes out, we're going to get a resolution to the Ezra Thrawn story. Right. We're going to, we're going to know that we, how we might even get a cameo of Thrawn in nine, you know, maybe, I don't know that, but it's, it's entirely possible. Well, we did have, we did have that one little, yeah, uh, the little tease. One, that little tease of possibly the mm-hmm. actor who might right. be playing Thrawn. So once nine comes out and we get the conclusion of Thrawn's story, we're, once we figure out how Thrawn came back into the spotlight, we're going to get more to happen in that time period. We're going to get a shitload of stuff. I want, I, 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 I bet seriously you... want a political thriller where that's where the first order is like being formed. I want a novel of Luke and Ben running around the galaxy going on a mission together. You, you're talking, I, I you're talking like, a, like a Tom Clancy type, like Jack Ryan kind type of, yeah. story? Yeah, kind of, you know, but I, I, but out of everything, I want a Luke and Ben story. I want a Luke and Ben novel. And, and look, if, if you're going to do anything, right. Okay. I don't think like, depending on how episode nine goes, we might get a flashback to Kylo actually destroying the temple, Luke's temple, his training academy, academy or whatever. I don't think we're going to though. I think the flashback we got of it burning is all the flashback we're going to get. However, if they do a story, a novel, and have Claudia Gray write it. You gotta have Claudia Gray write this novel. Depending on how Master and Apprentice goes with Obi Wan and, and Qui Gon that's coming out, have her do one with Luke and Ben. But do Ben's turn to the dark side in a novel of him destroying that temple. What led up to Luke deciding to go confront him? What led up to Kylo being manipulated by Snoke? You know, we're going to start getting information about where Snoke came from. Snoke's backstory, how the First Order came to be, what happened with Luke and Ben, what happened with the Jedi. It's all coming. It's just going to be after Episode Nine. Look, the only thing that I want in Episode Nine, as far as like the uh, the the things that were promised in Episode Seven, out of all the things that I really want in Episode Nine, of course I want something better than raised parents or nobodies. Mm-hmm. I don't. I still don't believe that. I, I said that. I said it to you from day one that that was a red herring. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. Um, but I can care less if that sticks. What I want is the Knights of Ren. Oh yeah. Well, see, and if you do a novel where I don't want a novel, I well, want it well, off film. Well, look, I want to see the Knights of Ren in action. That that's one thing that hasn't been touched on yet. Think about this, because uh, look at Ray's vision, right? The the vision she had when she touched the saber for the first time. Right. She saw f- past, future, and present. She saw past, you know, of uh, Bespin, Cloud City, the duel where Luke fought Vader and found out Vader was his father. That was the, that was the hallway she found herself in. You hear voiceovers of Luke and the or not Luke of um I'm sorry of Yoda and the Emperor and Obi Wan, both Obi Wans, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, she saw uh, Luke. And his temple being burned. That was the past. We saw Kylo with the Knights of Ren and a pouring rain. He still had his mask. So that's got to be past. That has to be the past. Not necessarily. Unless with him, with him stepping back. back. Yeah, I was about to say, with him stepping into the role of the supreme leader now, there ain't nobody to fucking ridicule him for wearing the mask. That's true. And now he's feeling like he's, you know, the ultimate power in the universe like his grandfather was. Mm-hmm. Who's to say he wouldn't put the mask back that's on? That's true. But, the, but uh, everything in that vision, that's the one thing we haven't seen yet. That's the one thing we haven't seen is the whole Knights of Ren thing. You know what well, I mean? Well, that, so, that vision is really the, the end-all and be-all that, yeah. that, that makes me not only believe that the, it was a red herring of, uh, of, of uh, Ray's parentage, but the Knights of Ren. I think the Knights of Ren have to appear in some way, shape, or form in this movie, uh, upcoming movie. And I think the red herring is that she's going to wind up being the granddaughter uh, of Satine and Obi Wan Kenobi, and the reason of being I say that is out of all the 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 part of that vision, the only character to speak directly to her in that vision was Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, she heard the she heard the background of of Luke battling Vader. She heard the background of the Emperor and Yoda, but the only one that said the only one that said Ray, these are your first steps and spoke directly to Ray was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. In that vision. We can't pass that off as just nothing. Well, that's true too. You know, and the fact that they used both actors for for the voiceover too cuz they you know they took the Ray of the Alec Guinness Obi-Wan from when he said like I think it was from a new hope when he sees R2 in the rocks and he's like come here my little friend don't be, don't afraid. be afraid and he took yeah. they took the Ray from the afraid to make him say Ray um but then when and he then says they, these are your first steps that's you and McGregor 
It was well, they, originally uh, James Arnold Taylor. He recorded that dialogue, and then as the Clone Wars Obi Wan, and then they went back and got Ewan, and he came in. And when they told James Arnold Taylor that he was being replaced by Ewan McGregor, he was like, "I'm not even mad. <laughs> like, yeah. like I'm not even, I'm not even mad." So. Uh, Although I do, I do wish they would have left at least a one word of James Arnold T- Taylor in there, just so you could say that all three Obi Wans. They well, yeah, yeah, but uh, the fact that they got Ewan McGregor back—that that's—I mean, not to beat a dead horse, but that goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the Obi Wan film. I truly believe that was in production. I truly, truly believe it, and it's just maybe they didn't say anything to Ewan because they didn't get that far into production. But uh, I think the script. I think yeah. the script's written. I think the script is written. I think they have an idea. The story is it have the idea, and they they fucking shelved it. They shelved it for the right time. Well, that's possible. And if they did, does that mean maybe they're actually putting together a long term plan? They've always had a long term plan, but it's, even before but they've even had before, a long term plan. But they've still let all these other directors come in and have free reign to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. And they realize that that is now wrong. Yeah. That's why Ryan Johnson has control of his trilogy, whether it's still happening or not. We discussed that earlier. That's why Benioff and Weiss have, a contr- have control of their series, whether it's three movies, five movies, seven movies, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's why they have their spinoff movies. That's your one-off to let directors do what they want as long as it still connects in some way to the storyline canon. Mm-hmm. You know, That's what Rogue One and Solo and shit are for. Mm-hmm. Okay, they realize you can't do a trilogy without having an overall story beginning, middle, end. Right. You can let the directors have free reign to do what they want, but they got to stay within this confine of what the story is supposed to be. But see, it's got to it's got to lead to this. See, yeah, and, and I, I completely agree with you. It does. You have to get look. I I, I don't think they sat down before because look, when Disney bought Lucasfilm, the day they bought it, they bought it in what two thousand and twelve. I think so. It was 2012. They wanted a movie out by 2015. By the end of 2015, that's when they wanted a movie out by. Mm -hmm. I think that they – because Seven played it really safe, right, with the the similarities to A New Hope. They played it really safe. I always looked at Seven as just a, hey, here's the sequel. This is just letting you know we are going to try to focus on what made Star Wars great before – you know, and try to, that's, that's what I took it as. Hey, we're back. We're not the prequels. That's what I, that's what I took it as. Right. Mm-hmm. So I feel like they, they took their time so much focusing on force wagons to make sure it was done right because prequels, three strikes, you're out. Right. I think they took their time. I don't think they actually sat down and did an overall story of where they wanted to get with nine. I think they focused on seven. And then when Ryan Johnson came on board for eight, he said, all right, look, in order for me to write this, we got to figure out where we're going. So they try to, he kind of had an idea of where nine was going to go, but they didn't have it mapped out completely. You know, I think so he did eight and now JJ has to come in with what Ryan has done and try to finish it off in a satisfying way. I don't that is think, true. I think what, I think what happened or what they should have done was instead of saying, we're going to have a movie out by 2015, they should have said, we're going to have a movie out by 2016, by the end of 2016. And, and, you know, not, not not necessarily focused on standalone films just yet either. Focus on seven, eight, nine. Get that right. Get a trilogy out. Get it right. You know, before you start doing these standalone films, I think they should have sat down and took 2013 to and sat down with uh, and just run this script through the fucking ringers. Like not the script, but the concept, the story, the overall story synops- synopsis. I think they should have sat down, figured out. All right, this is where we want to get. This is the whole story we want to tell. We got to split this into three movies. All right, so we got to split this into three separate stories. Boom, boom, boom. Here are the cutoff points, right? And then they say, okay, so this is where we got to do episode seven. So we got to hire a writer to come in, write the script for episode seven. This is their, this is where they're allowed to work in this section. We got to tell them this is where you start. This is where you got to get to make it happen, right? Uh Then when seven comes out, right? And, 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 and sit down and hire all the directors on at the same time. This is what they should have done. It's just my opinion. Hired all the directors on. At the same time, so that they could all collaborate together to make one massive picture, right? So right. have d- the directors for eight and nine have input in seven. Not have three directors, just have them have input, right, with with seven. Once seven comes out, that way eight and nine know where they're going. They kind of have an idea. Then you fo- start focusing on episode eight. 
right? So then right. you can have the director for seven come in and say, well, the reason I did this is because of this, right? So, okay, cool. So we can put that into eight. And then with the director of nine coming in knowing, okay, so now we've got this idea. This is what I have to work for on this one. This is where I got to get to with this one. And you could have this overall arc do a great episode seven, eight, and nine, an epic fucking trilogy. And then once you've got everybody won over saying, oh my God, we got a great trilogy that they actually took their time and did right. And don't rush the films out. Don't rush them out every two years. Take the three years to put each film out. You know, don't fucking rush it. I would rather them put an extra year into production and get it right than to rush it out in two years and make it shit, right? Once you get that trilogy out, yeah, it's going to take nine years to get everything out. But once you do, like like Agra Dad just said, Disney knew Star Wars was going to be a cash cow. They knew it was yep. going to from the get-go. So they own Star Wars. They don't. They didn't just lease the rights. They owned it. They own it. Mm-hmm. So you've got take 10 years, get everything right. Set it all up, right, for this giant release. And then once you get nine out, then you can start doing, hey, we're going to do standalone film here and here and here. You know, I, th- I feel like people might have been a little more accepting of what Solo could have been. Uh, you know, even Rogue One had some people saying that movie was shit. I think Rogue One would have, if they would have done Rogue One, it would have been accepted a little bit better. Um, but I just, I feel like had they sat down and mapped out, we got to get from here to here. Right. Like Lord of the Rings. Okay. Like take, I know I'm rambling here, but take Lord of the Rings for an example, right? Three books. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. This part of the story, this part of the story, this part of the story. This is, we knew from the beginning of the first book, they were going to get to Mordor at the the end of the third book. We knew that's where they were going. That was the end game. Right. Right. So, and like Marvel, we knew that Thanos was going to be the end game for, for the entire phase one through three or whatever. You know what I mean? That was good. That was where they were going to. And it paid off over 10 years. Look at what infinity war has done. Look at how great that movie was. Right. Uh-huh. So they should have sat down and did the exact same thing with star Wars and just slowly well, took their I'll, time and, and not blow their proverbial uh, wide. And I just, will argue just with you. It. I will argue with you that that's exactly what they're doing. I, I may not, I may not agree with all their decisions, but I think that's exactly what they're doing. I think they're closing out Lucas's vision to concentrate on, on moving forward with what Disney's Star Wars is going to be. Mm-hmm. Well, but see, first I, they've got first they've got to end the story well, that Lucas, Lucas started. See, and I think Disney's vision of Star Wars is just going to be standalone, like new characters everywhere, standalone films everywhere. Like I think that's what they're which is fine, think, expand, which is fine. Yeah, that's great. The world. That 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 that's great. But it's just we've got to rip the bandaid off of ending the Skywalker stuff. You know, like, which I'm I'm not thrilled with, but I no, think that, I think that I think that is the end game for Disney. Is Disney is trying to say, look, we need to finish what George started. Mm-hmm. His nine movie arc needs to be done, and then from there we will have free reign to do whatever the fuck we want with this franchise. Yeah, you know, and, and plus, look, and if you finish, like, if they'd have taken their time, and and held off on the standalone films and actually did the trilogy first, right? Right. That would have, yes, it would have taken nine, ten years to do, but look at how much of the fan base you would have won back over had you sat down and did this story bit by bit by bit and made it and painted this, you know, collage, this beautiful painting of a story and knew where you were going with it. When the fan fan base over, then when you announce, hey, we're doing a movie called Rogue One, it's about them stealing the plans of the Death Star. Awesome. Great. You guys did seven, eight, and nine. Great. You closed that out beautifully. Let's see what else you can do. You know, instead of kind of sprinkling them in, in, in the middle. Well, I got a, I got a question to pose to not only you, but to the fans as well. Okay. But we'll we'll have it and we'll give you a week to think about it because I want it answered for next time. Okay. Okay, because we are we are oh, way over time here. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, here's the question: Do you think that seven and eight and nine would have been better received had we when with Disney buying the franchise if we would have picked up directly after? Return of Jedi and started building in that 30 year span to what seven, eight, nine were being, as opposed to just having that jump no. into this next generation. No, I don't think it would have been as well received. I, and, I, and I'll tell you exactly why. I'll give you one good example. All right. Solo, a Star Wars story. You would have had to have recast Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia. The big three. Chewie's easy to recast. They did that. Nobody even really fucking noticed. But Han, Luke, and Leia, everybody bitched and moaned because Alden Ehrenreich looked nothing like Harrison Ford. Until he did. Until he did. <laughs> and everybody's still bitching and pissing and moaning about it. Like, you might as well just forget about looking like Harrison Ford because no matter who you get, it's not going to look like Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford looks like Harrison Ford. 
And even if they do look like Harrison Ford, yeah. doesn't guarantee they're going to act like Harrison Ford. Right. And you Kate, did, and and you know everybody's like, well, they wanted what was the uh, Anthony and Gruber, the kid that could do a great Harrison Ford impression, a great Han Solo impression. I didn't want a movie of somebody doing impressions. I wanted a, a built off character of Solo, right? So if, hey, has anybody if, has anybody paid attention to the Order sixty nine or uh, or uh, Star Wars Battlefront two? Uh, Doc in a blue box at Wild High seventy seven suck at Battlefront two. I've done Han Solo impressions. I, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but I think I've done pretty decent. I thought I thought I was playing with Harrison Ford for a minute. Yeah, yeah, I thought I did. I did pretty decent impressions of Harrison Ford as Han Solo as well. But I look nothing like Harrison Ford. No, you don't. You know, and it, it, and I and to be completely honest, if it came down to impersonation of Harrison Ford or looking like him, I'm taking looking like him. You know, because I just. Gee, thanks. <laughs> well, I know, I know, I know. But I was trying to would, get myself but, in the next solo movie. Okay, if, come on, man. If Episode Seven had picked what up, the, let's say, uh, let's say like three years after Episode Six, right? Let's let's say right. Force Awakens. If well, it would have probably been called Force Awakens though. But let's just say Episode Seven. Let's say it picked up three years after Return of the Jedi. You would have had to have recast Han, Luke, and Leia, and you would have been having the and right off the fucking bat, you would have people going, "Are you?" Fucking serious! You are not doing this to my Star Wars right out of the fucking gate. I, I, I it would have been a huge fucking problem. Well, I, I was just curious, and again, I want to get everybody's opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to get everybody's opinions on this, and we will collect this. So on YouTube, make sure you're leaving comments down below. Right here on Twitch, make sure you leave your comments in the in the chat stream, even if it's off air. You're watching a rerun. Leave. The, I will read all of these, and I will write them all down. And next week on Breaking the Fourth Wall, we will read them out and address them accordingly. But that is the question presented to you guys. Do you think the the backlash and hatred to a lot of the things, the story wise? Uh, the new trilogy might have been softer blowed if Disney had decided to start their story, take over Star Wars a little closer to Return of the Jedi, as opposed to being 30 years past and built up to this point, as opposed to just showing up right here at this point. Mm-hmm. OK, uh, guys. That is the stream, the radiocastfm.com. Thank you very much for tuning in. Twitch TV, Agrodad Gaming, uh, John Mark Tully. Guys, thanks for tuning in and interacting with us. We absolutely loved it. It was great having you guys here. It's like the it's like the twelfth man, they say in sports, <laughs> in football. It's like having the twelfth man there. So uh had an absolute blast. Uh Brian, why don't you tell them everything that's going on with you? And hey. We're about oh a week God. away from the return of the Star Wars Canon podcast, so he'll tell you yeah. all about it. Oh my God! All right, so what have I? What am I up to? Okay, so if you guys want to find me on YouTube, you can find me at the Star Wars channel I started called Star Wars Canon Library. Uh, as Chris just brought up, a week from what is today, Tuesday? Yes, it is. A week from this coming Saturday, September first, will be the epic. Big triumphant return of the Star Wars Canon podcast hosted by Chris Dolly and myself uh, on our, that YouTube channel. We're going to be putting it on there. Uh, and make sure to check out the Facebook page for the Star Wars Canon Library. Uh, just simply search Star Wars Canon Library. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, give us a thumbs up and a like there and a follow. Uh, the end of this month, it's a, what is it a week from this coming Friday? Yeah, we'll be doing a live wow. Q&A on Facebook strictly for the Facebook followers. We'll be giving away a hardback copy of Thrawn Alliances to one lucky viewer. Uh, make sure to check out StarWarsCanonLibrary.com for the entire timeline. Cover art for all the comics, novels, TV shows, film posters, everything there. Uh, like I said, the timeline is there, including the chronological list of Clone Wars episodes uh, uh, episodes in chronological order. The podcast is going to be there once we come back. Uh, and make sure to visit the Patreon page for the Star Wars Canon Library. Uh, I'd sure appreciate if you took a look at that also. All right, guys, and definitely a couple things I want to address here. Number one, uh, right now we are going to have next week uh, War of the Stars on here, besides breaking the fourth wall. War, or, sorry, not next week, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, War of the Stars will be uh, coming on for its monthly uh, review of all things Star Wars, and we got a special guest who is an author, uh, a historian author, who not only wrote of sto- uh, historical stuff about Star Wars, but also... Uh, connecting up Star Wars to real history and how it really t- ties into real history. Uh, it's going to be an interesting interview, guys, tomorrow, so make sure you check uh, joining us and checking that out. 
Another thing I want to bring up real quick to everybody here, Agro Dad did say, good stuff. Thanks for reading my comments. I'd like to be a part of the show. Well, that's good that you want to be a part of the show because the other thing I want to talk about is right now Realm of the Mist Entertainment is going through a revamp phase. Uh, I don't really see Star Wars canon podcast needing more than, than Brian and myself. However, I am supposed to be joining the guys of the cocky cockpit with uh, bringing Journal of the Jedi, which was a originally a Realm of the Mist uh, uh, show, over to the cocky cockpit and start streaming on their Twitch channel, as well as normally we have more than two people doing breaking the fourth wall and usually more than two people on War of the Stars. We are casting. If you would like to be a part of uh, of podcasting to sit down and talk all things entertainment on breaking the fourth wall or just talk some Star Wars on some of the many Star Wars shows that we present or maybe have a show idea of your own. Make sure you contact us. You can hit, you can hit us up at Realm of the Mist Entertainment, all one word, at gmail.com. Let us know that you want to be a part of this, what ideas you have or what you want to bring to the table. Make sure you have a Twitch account, because or yeah, not a Twitch account, excuse me, a uh, Skype account because we do all of this through Skype. Okay, so you have to ha- you have to have access to Skype, and luckily Skype's free, so it costs you nothing to have it. We prefer that you have a decent mic and a decent camera, but it is not necessary. We can we can help you build up when it gets there, but we want people who are dedicated, who will help bring a lot of joy to the show, and will help promote the shows that they're on. So if you're interested, definitely hit us up again. That is Realm of the Mist Entertainment at Gmail dot com. Guys, you can find me right here on Breaking the Fourth Wall. You can find me anywhere there's Realm of the Mist Entertainment. And in about 15 minutes, you will find me on the Xbox One joining the guys from the Cocky Cockpit because tonight is Order 69. We're going to be playing some Battlefront 2. And, of course, next week we'll be returning to the PS4 where you will will probably be seeing Doc in a Blue Box joining us as well. All you're going to see is Doc in a Blue Box stealing a fuck ton of kills from uh, Wild High 77 over there. He's going to get a shitload of assists. Not this time. This time, Wild High 77 is going to take a whole bunch of deaths because he's going to be standing there giving off the position of where uh, Dr. <laughs> Blue Box is camping. Guys, hey. thank you for hanging it's out with us. <laughs> it's a legitimate strategy. It's a legitimate strategy. You team killing fucked hard. Uh, <laughs> you rock it or. Guys, thank you very much for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this in any capacity, please, please, please. Uh, hit that thumbs up button on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, check out all the other great Let's Plays of G- Press A Gaming as well as all the great podcasts of Realm of the Miss Entertainment. Give some love to the Patreon page. Without you guys, there is no us. Thank you very much. Give us a follow here on Twitch. Tell your friends about us. We'd love to see you live, and we'd love to hear your comments on the replays. So, guys, thank you very much. Without you, there is no us. And until next time, Breaking the Fourth Wall is out.